Welcome in and thanks for joining today Nafaran. Welcome in and thanks for joining today Jess Temporal. Welcome in and thanks for joining today Stream Elements. Welcome in and thanks for joining today Coach Chris Jones. Welcome in and thanks for joining today Clarkio.
welcome in and thanks for joining today rambling geek. Hey, 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 how we doing today? What's going on, chat? Happy Friday, Rambling Gee, Chris Jones, Jess, good to see you, Nafron. Welcome in, everybody. Did you miss the intro dance? No, I hope I didn't miss the intro dance. No, I'm there for the intro. You are, you are. Uh, you're here for the dance too, Jess. Glad to hear it. Also, congrats on all the content you've been putting out, Jess. Welcome awesome stuff. And thanks for joining today, Ellie. Hey, young. Hey, long time. It's hot in the UK. Hey, listen, I'm in Florida. You can't tell me about hot. <laughs> Looking forward to the end of the day. I feel you. I feel you. Will the real Clark Yo please stand up? Yes. All right, we're going to get started shortly. But what I'm going to do so that we can have like a, a, a longer break without ads, especially when we get to the point of um, where it's on stream. I'm going to run a three minute ad right now while I also promote on socials, the streams live. Okay. And then we'll get into the dance and do the stream. The UK is melting. I tell you melting. All right. I feel you relative to your area. Totally understand. Totally understand. All right. We're doing it. An ad is about to start in 5,000 milliseconds. Welcome in and thanks for joining today, Clark Eobot. There's an ad running for 180.
Welcome in and thanks for joining today Freedom DAO. All right, ads are over. We finish one more thing here and then we'll get rolling. Welcome in and thanks for joining today Ayush Sharma. All right, it's time. Jimbo, you ready, buddy? Are you ready, sir? For the dance, shall I go into a barrel to get rolling? Yeah, yeah, uh, no, there's no weather command. Ayush, but good to see you. We're still in a heat wave over here in Toronto, and I'm sad about it. I want to fall. I want fall to start right now. Yeah, oh, fall's such a good season for so many reasons. Freedom Dow, thank you for checking out the project. That is what we are typically working on, but uh, we'll see. I, we'll see if we'll get into that today because I have some other technical stuff I want to take a look at. Uh, there's a new VS Code release and the Bun 1.0 release that came out, and... Uh, I am excited about it. I want to check it out. I want to, it's supposed to be a drop in replacement for node. So I want to see it with some of my projects and how it goes. Anywho. Thank you for the 27 yeah, long months of subscribing finite singularity. Finite with the new blur plugin release as well. Ooh. Thank you for the 27 heckin months, man. Appreciate you finite. We'll get into it in a minute. We're going to do the dance. <clears throat> Jess, someday you got to teach me the bot on chat stuff. Yeah, for sure. Just hit me up anytime. I love talking shop about that. So. All right. Ooh. Here we go.
Awkward stairs. The famous brows from Finite Stream Emote. Good to see you all. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Welcome. 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 Super, super happy to have you all here. It is a wonderful Friday. Hope you've had a great week so far. Welcome into the Clark Yo Shenanigan Show every Friday at 1230 p.m. Eastern time right here on twitch.tv slash Clarkio or I don't know what that was, but youtube.com slash Clarkio slash live slash get with it na 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 uh happy to have you here let me tell you what you're in store what you're in store let me tell you what you're in for if you choose to tune in and stick around for the entirety of the stream or a portion of the stream that best interests you those of you that have been around you know the format in fact, you know what? Let's let's take a little quiz. You didn't know we were going to come into this with a quiz for those of you that are familiar with the stream. What is the format that we usually go through? Let me know in the chat. Getting jiggy with it says finite. Ian Alex Hart, good to see you. Welcome in. Thank you for joining in with the emotes. Jess as well. Finite with the emotes. Hmm. Uh, who else? We got Nafron with the emotes. I Dream of Memes, good to see you too. Welcome in. Thank you for the alien dance. Excuse me, a little, little indigestion here. Dance time. Thanks for joining today, Cardhouse underscore. Cardhouse, good to see you. Welcome back, welcome back. B C A A B. Jess got it right. Jess, Jess talks about it. that's the format we do. Wins of the week, celebrate each other's wins, practicing our Freud and Freud and flexing that muscle. Words on stream and Wordle, and then code code related stuff right thank you jess thank you for participating in that quiz <laughs> um finite thank you again for the the 27 months dude heckin long time very much appreciated good to see you and congrats on i mean that that's i know we haven't gotten into the wins of the week and i'm kind of like speaking for you but big win of the week for you obs plugin that went out you forgot Wordle? No worries, Jess. The OBS plugin that went out that you had, the Blur one, and I know you were... And did you did you say... I, th I thought I heard you say the new Blur plugin release as well. And you mentioned the other one that you were working on, the Outline one. I need to put those to use. I haven't installed either yet, but I the it's on, it's on my mind. I need to take some time to work on the stream production, and I haven't done that in a really heckin' long time. Um... But very happy for you and congrats on that. All right, so let's get into it then. So as Jess said, we do wins of the week. I got some things to share with you all. Uh, 
in terms of wins. And and then we'll get into Wordle. I haven't done the Wordle yet. Don't spoil it. And we'll play words on stream together. And then we'll get into the technical topic. In terms of the coding section, technical topic se section, my plan is, if you can figure that out from the thanks for joining today, Danish from the title of the stream, right, Meow, and that is that uh, we will be taking a look at Bun, which is a new JavaScript runtime that just released its production version, 1.0. It was supposed to go out yesterday. They ran into a little snag, but it went out this morning. And I'm really excited to dig into that. I also have a blog post on it over on the Sneak channel, a Sneak's blog, rather. Uh, and, uh, well, that I contributed to and did a lot, a lot of a lot of work there. But it's written as somebody, a ghost written, essentially. Um, so we'll check that out. Take a look at it. Get your thoughts on it. I want to test it out, too, because it's supposed to be a drop-in replacement for Node. It's supposed to be faster. So I want to get that. I want to see if it feels faster. Like they have all these kinds of metrics. It's measurably faster based on the benchmarks that they put out there and what other people have written about. Um, but I want to see how it feels too, as a developer experience, right? Danish, good to see you, buddy. We'll get to the, I'll get to your wins of the week in just a second here. So that's the plan for today. If any of that interests you, I hope you stick around for the rest of the Clarkio shenanigan show. If not, thanks for popping in, checking in, saying hi. And, uh, if you got to go, or maybe if you, if you, if you got to go, but you can keep lurking, I'd greatly appreciate that. If not, totally understand. Have a good rest of your Friday and weekend. And maybe I'll see you next time when we're doing something of more interest for you. Okay. For those of you that are sticking around, let me hear your wins of the week. Drop them in the chat, prefix them with like W O T W wins of the week or my win. And then I'll be able to easily filter, today, bald bearded builder. filter through that. Okay. I got to go drink some coffee a bit bit ago. Fair enough, sir. Fair enough. All right. While you are, your wins of the week are getting queued up in the chat, my win of the week, one, it was just announced at DevRelCon this morning, Eastern time, but like whatever time it is there in the UK, that uh, my team at Sneak, the DevRel team, the team that I'm on, it's not my team, but you know, my team, uh, we won an award as part of the DevRel awards. And we got the, I forget the name of the award, most impactful uh, or unique, I forget what it was, uh, initiative, which was our sneak big fix, which you all know I've been talking about and sharing in the past quite a bit. Three, three, two, two, one, one. I don't know if it's going to work, Nafron, but thank you for the high five. It's not working really. So we got nominated for that. And we were also nominated for best DevRel overall. I don't know who won that. We only got word internally so far from folks, the team, folks on our team that are there uh, about the. About the uh, initiative one for the big fix, which you all know, like I had a, a best DevRel initiative. Oh That's what God, it's called for. Who the hell? I'm particularly proud of that because of how much involvement i had in especially the first one but also the second time we did the big fix of this past year or this year rather and last year and looking forward we've been working on the app as part of work uh like my through my day job since february basically been improving it making it better and looking for ways to enhance it. in fact most recently some of you might find this interesting we've been working on containerizing it so that um folks can put we're going to the, the plan is to potentially essentially open source it so that other people can run a big fix in a box type of solution and it's just containerized. So they just launch, you know, deploy the container, set up a couple environment variables and you're good to go type of thing. So we're, we're, we've been working on that most recently to give you a little insight into that. And that's been fun. So that's that's been a win. We won an award and just the fun in diving into that challenge um, has been a win too. Uh, what else has been a win? Family's doing good. I feel like I'm rec I'm still feeling a little sick, like under like cold type of thing, but like it's not that big of a deal. It's not bother it's not so much where I'm like drained or I'm not having energy to want to do anything. It's just annoying type of thing. It's just congestion. You might hear it in my voice a little bit, so sorry about that if it's kind of grossing you out or whatever. Um, but overall feeling good. Kids are doing good. Uh there's a couple things I had it. This is what happens. Like there's so many things that I get in mind. And I'm like, oh, this is what I want to talk about during the beginning of the stream, the intro of it. And then I forget. Maybe it'll come to me. Oh, VS. So VS Code release came out too. Uh, and I'm really, which a win personally for me, 
maybe maybe some of you will find this interesting too if you do presentations or record videos or anything like that and you want to be able to show keyboard shortcuts or like really emphasize where you click within vs code they have this this mode that you can enable called screencast mode i'll i'll show it later but there was a regression with that where and so the nice thing with that is it would normally in the past only show keyboard shortcuts so like if i did Control shift p to bring up the command palette or if i did Control j to hide and show the bottom panel or Control b to hide and show the side panel that type of stuff it would only show that keyboard shortcut and maybe the keyboard shortcut name like the action name we took to do that and then i don't know what happened but somehow there was a regression where it ended up showing every keystroke like if you typed anything even when you were coding type of thing people can see what you're typing they don't need to see that highlighted in like an overlay within vs code for that and so it was super annoying and i could never do or enable the screencast mode for presentations or recordings for the past like i don't know year i want to say maybe more as a result of it in this latest release it got updated and it's been fixed so i'm super excited about that and that was another win that i felt uh that came up this week so lots of fun stuff going on what's going on in your neck of the woods so so let's start reading up on your wins here screencast mode i want it uh i want to send links yeah you can send a link to that if you're asking or you want me to give you a link is that what you're asking jess i use make a to-do list what was that in response to i forget uh why containerize it just ship your machine yeah 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 triple b that'll go over well you're so funny you're so funny good to see you though buddy awesome congrats to you and the sneak team appreciate that thank you jess uh, Nafron, thank you for the high five. Triple B, congrats. I forgot Sneak was nominated for that. Thank you, Triple B. That was a genuine... Wait a minute. That was a non-sarcastic and genuine comment from Triple B in the chat during a live stream? Are you hacking kidding me? What, ha what happened to the real Triple B? What happened? Is somebody taking over his account? Is that what happened? All right. First, uh, let me search for wins of the week. I see card house is most recent but uh jess win of the week where oh i missed jess did you put it in as win i see just win of the week maybe if i just search for jess uh all your messages da, 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 da. yeah you can use your own emoji in any channel jess stream reported for harassment <laughs> stream report for harassment okay Yeah, send me the link, please. And uh, the list is to stop forgetting stuff. Okay. The link to screencast mode. Uh, VS Code screencast mode. Uh, why doesn't it show it in their official documentation? Like, I'm not getting a link to their official documentation on it, but other people's blog posts and stuff are coming up. I want to send you to, like... Well, here's the actually that's funny. I searched for it and it has it brings up the issue, the regression issue. One of the, there's many of them actually. <laughs> I even commented on this one actually. Here's the link to that uh issue in GitHub that had the discussion on it and that ultimately led to the VS Code team fixing it, which I'm super thankful for cuz like that's low priority for them, you know. There's more important things for them to be focusing on, but uh, thankfully, it got done in this one. Um, maybe I'll just show you real quick. That might be better. So I'm going to show this, and then we'll get into the wins of the week. So you press Control shift p or Command-Shift-P on a Mac, and you search screencast mode right there, developer toggle screencast mode. And then what it does is now you see where I, when I click, it highlights it in red. Uh, when I do keyboard shortcuts, like I want to hide the side panel over here, Control-B. And it tells you the name of it, although my head is... My big head is in the way! So you see what I'm pressing and the name of that command, so that if you wanted to, you can search for it in here. Toggle side bar visibility. Now, you notice how when I'm typing, those letters are going in there? So that's on by default, but the nice thing is if I bring up my settings and I search for screencast... And you come in here this is the new option the cyan god good to see you welcome in um they added this setting now so well one in the past update the last release before this one which was the this was the august release so the july release 
they added these settings and now in this most recent one they added this so you uncheck that and now when i type you no longer see the letters which is so nice i'm so thankful that they they added this now you see the letters again right you get the, you get the idea so there you go Ho hopefully that helps jess and now even while i'm streaming i can leave it on and it won't be too big of a deal like it'll be great it'll be great it's great great you know so that's screencast mode real quick and thank you for the question jess all right let me uh look up more wins of the week that came through uh finding singularity is totally my win of the week i'm going to try to release the new stroke plugin early next week excellent to hear that congrats on that again round of applause why are we not seeing the applause uh is that the bots unable to find it oh socket not connected socket to me let's try uh reconnecting again in the meantime i'll read uh some more wins uh the niche is up next in my search i get i feel like more people shared wins of the week remember folks prefix it with w-o-t-w or win please and that way it's easy for me to filter messages in the app i'm using the niche says win of the week i move further into home improvement project today I installed a beautiful hanging dining table light. i saw that on your stories congrats on that too man that's awesome why don't i hear that now oh because i turned the, I, I stopped the bot uh round of applause though you can hear my clapping at least congrats congrats awesome stuff it helps you definitely using that's great to hear jess yeah, the screencast mode. I didn't use VS Code as much before. I'm discovering all sorts of extensions these days. Today, I use Thunder Client. Yes. Although, so Thunder Client you use for making like REST API calls and stuff like that, right? Um, I saw from James Q Quick. Shout out to James, who's I think live right now even too, if you want to check him out. Um, he also, on his YouTube, he released a video today, this morning, about the Postman extension, which is very cool. Um i don't know why it took postman so long to get an extension out but it's awesome that they did and uh if you you're used to using their separate app oftentimes well, thanks for joining today i am douglas 736 <laughs> then you're uh you're gonna like being able to use that directly in there all right let's see if i can restart the bot real quick here get it to connect to obs and show the applause like it should Just going to give that a second. Boom, ba -da -boom, ba -da -boom, ba -da -boom, boom, boom. Welcome in, Ian Douglas. Happy to have you here, buddy. All right, so it is connected. Now, if I do applause, there we go. There's your applause, the niche. Finite. All right, next up, Card House has a win of the week. Served over 1.6 million authorization requests during opening day of football. And Mahomes lost. <laughs> Congrats on all that. Very happy for you. Very happy for you. <laughs> Mahomes lost. That was a wild. That was a surprisingly. I mean, I had heard the. God, who the hell cares? I had heard the Lions were going to be a, a much better team. I mean, even though last year they were pretty decent too, but they're even better now. It looks like the fact that they're beating Kansas City at home. Like, holy moly, that's a big deal. So, congrats to... Uh, do you just not like Mahomes? Is that what it is, Cardhouse? Happy Friday, Ian Douglas. Do you just not like Mahomes? Or you just don't like the Chiefs? Are they a rival of yours? What's the, to, to, Give me some more context on that. Because I think Mahomes is great. He's a good dude. But maybe I'm wrong, you know? Uh, Any other wins come through? Oh, Jess has a win of the week. Videos on TikTok shared on Discord, not here. Maybe that's why you can't find it. Today, I had... Courage to plug my own book on my own live stream. Congrats on that, Jess. Very happy for you. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. What other wins do we got? I think that's it for right now. Keep them coming, folks. If you got more or you think of some later, again, it doesn't need to be anything like, you know, don't think too hard on it. It could be something as simple as you had like your favorite meal today or something. You know what I mean? Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, anybody? Speaking of, actually, that reminded me that Sean A, WW Sean 08, shared uh, 
win a week. Oh, it wasn't him. It was Chris Jones. Chris Jones, I thought you were here too. Aren't you, Chris? I thought I saw you in here. Look, I imagine Chris Jones won't mind us sharing. But Chris Jones uh, introduced the missus and the kiddo to peanut butter jelly song and promptly left the house. Peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly. Peanut butter jelly. So I was uh, that made me laugh, like actually laugh out loud when I read that. Nafron, win of the week. I made a pizza from scratch and it was pretty good. Congrats on that. Welcome in and thanks for joining today. Very happy for you. Very happy for you. And thank you. Thank you, everybody, for sharing so far your wins of the week. It's great to hear that stuff. We're practicing our Freud and Freude. If you don't recall or maybe you forgot why we do this, there's a video made by the Wizard of Stoke over on TikTok talking about Freud and Freude. So if you want to know more about that, check out that link in another tab. Okay? Keep this, keep this tab open. Don't leave me. Unless you have to. Um, Liminal, good to see you again. Welcome in. Win of the week. Bagel, cream cheese, kimchi. Is that what you is that, is that what you ate? Is that what you're saying? Or are you just you're just sharing food words? Bearded builder says win of the week. Finally dug that infected. Puss filled in grown toenail out. Only nine more to go. Wood. Oh man. That imagery. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. And congrats. Very happy for you. Uh, Liminal, happy for you. Congrats on uh, that meal. Okay. Round of applause for both you and Triple B. Uh, Jess, also another win of the week. Speaking of food, cooking more and eating better, my doctor will be proud. That's awesome. Congrats on that as well, Jess. Thank you for sharing. Really good together eating now since we're on a food topic, says Liminal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Good. I'm glad you're chilling and eating and, and hanging out with us. All right. What else did I miss in chat? Let me catch up a little bit and then I'll get into the wordle. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really need to get my teleprompter set up on this machine. I haven't done that yet. Speaking of, Duet is what I use to... I have the app on, on an iPad that I would hook up here to the computer to charge it and or and to connect it directly to the duet app anybody else ever heard of or use the duet app and the idea is you can create like a screen you can use your ipad as like another screen a secondary or third whatever it may be and so that's what i would do to put the chat on it and have it reflect off the teleprompter on this camera here and something must have changed in their latest release like i had i thought i had paid for it and now it's like asking me to pay again or something like that. I don't know what's going on. And it's like a yearly subscription or something. Uh, thank you, Mods, for helping out with one of that messages from earlier. Cyan God, good to see you. Oh, well, J James Q's quick stream just ended. Okay. Uh, Ian Douglas, whoop, Postman. I'm glad. Yeah, I like I like Postman. Good to hear other folks, too. He's too good, and I'm Josh Allen fan. Oh, Mahomes, that's why? Cardhouse? Okay. He is very good. And you're a Josh Allen fan. Yeah, go Bills. Hey, Bills playing the Jets on Monday night. I'm a Jets fan. I'm a Jets fan. I'm kind of excited about the season for once. I, I feel like there's some hope. Our division is so, so stacked. It's going to be a wild year. Hey, Young, have you tried Cursor? No, what's Cursor? I, I feel like I've heard of it. But I'm not sure. Uh, Liminal says, win of the week, another one. Meal prepped at the beginning of the week. Burrito bowls made my own cilantro lime. Oh my gosh, you're making me hungry. That sounds delicious. Congrats on that. Very good. <laughs> Cardhouse has been using Duet for years. Have you noticed a change in it, Cardhouse? Or maybe like, because on, on my old machine, I had it set up and everything was working fine. On this new machine, I went to set it up prior to last stream. And I ran into issues. Like, I couldn't get it to connect or anything. I wonder if I need to deactivate it off the old machine and activate it onto this somehow or something like that. I don't know. Apple copied Duet, did they? What is, what is uh, What does Apple officially offer then in that regard, Ayush? Liminal says, did you know you can cook rice like you cook pasta instead of the two-to-one absorption method? Mind blown. I did not know. Cardhouse says, I will have to check later. Okay, no worries, Cardhouse. Yeah, no pressure. I mean, I'll figure it out at some point, but I just figured since you're an avid user, maybe you might know off, off the top of your head type of thing. All right, I'm all caught up on chat. Let's get into Wordle. 
Wordle, Wordle, Wordle for today. The Wordle for today. Do not spoil it. In fact, I'm going to get on this real quick. Pause, quick, quick, pause the redemption. Why can't I pause this redemption? It won't let me. <gasps> there we go. Paused. Let me share my screen. All right. You've never seen me play this before. This is Wordle. You got to guess the word. It's a five letter word. It's a new word every 24 hours every day, essentially. And you get a maximum of six guesses. The objective is to guess them in as little guesses as possible. Possible. And you get hints along the way. So I, of course, of course, always start with farts. And the hints I received there is that F, A, and T are not in it because of the gray background, but R and S are in it. However, the yellow background indicates that they're not in the correct position. So we can rule them out. S is not in the last position and R is not in the middle here. So maybe it's like... Welcome in and thanks for joining today, Dorits. Hey, Dorits. Sharts. Yes. Well, so it's funny you say that because my old PC, the, you know how you can name your Windows PC? Like I called that one Fart Desk. This one is called Shart Desk, courtesy of uh, Twitch chat helping me come up, decide on the name. We had a couple of different names, but Shart seemed like the next level up from Fart, you know? So, um, sh Shire, I want to do something like that, maybe. Shri, Shire, Shore, Shore. Let's do Shore, like the seashore. Ooh, big money on that one. So we got an E and an O in there now, and we learned that the R doesn't go there or the S, it doesn't start in S. So maybe it's like R O. So the R has to go either in the first position or second position. It's likely, maybe, is it Orin or, or, or rise? Is that even a word? I don't know. It could start maybe in, with an O, but I'm thinking it's more likely to start with an R. Maybe O, S, and then blank E. Like rosy? Is it something like rosy cheeks maybe? I think that's a good guess. Am I putting all the letters in new positions? R is in a new position. O is in an S is in a new position. All right, going with that sentence. Rosie is not a word. Okay. Hmm. Rose. 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 Rouse. Is Rouse. Is that a word? Send it. It is. And it is the word. Hey. Hey. hey, hey. Booyah. All right, now we're going to go share it in the Discord. Speaking of the Discord, if you'd like to join up there, be part of the community. Thank you, Liminal. Thank you, Liminal. If you want to join the Discord and be part of the community off stream, share your wins in the channels there. We also have a game category where we share our Wordle results and see how we compare to everybody on the daily. Looks like uh, Frackberg beat us today. He got it in two guesses looking at the Wordle channel in Discord. Rugmat got it in five. Haha, <laughs> beat ya. And Michael Jolly, Bald Bearded Builder, got in five. Beat you too, buddy. Zing. Got him. I'm just kidding. It's not really Welcome like... in and thanks for joining today, Janice. It's not really a competition. Hey, Yanni. Good to see you. The head pad stuff is not working. I still got to work on that with the uh, the new PC here. But uh, there we go. There's the Wordle. We're done with that. And now, folks, it is time for words on stream. Now, I don't know if we have our, our friends that are like elite players but if you weren't here last week take a look at this i don't think we're ever going to break that record now it was mind-blowing the folks that we had in here we got raided by people uh that normally stream words on stream speaking of which let's switch categories And that brought in two folks that were part of the world record that any stream ever reached uh, onwards on stream, which was like level 12,334 or something like 340 or something. I forget what it was. We had the 
I had the clip of it. They shared the clip of it, um, which was like King Crimson and um, blanket on the other person's handle. But you can go check out the last VOD from last week. Holy moly. Like the, it, getting to level 61 took a while too. We should bait them with letters. <laughs> so that was, that was really wild to see and experience. I don't know if we're going to get that, but let's just have some fun and play it for a little bit. Enjoy your lunch. I have a little snack I'm going to munch on uh, while we play. And uh, and then, you know, we'll play like a round or two of this because I don't think we're going to beat that level now unless we get those folks in here miraculously again. Um, and, and then we'll get into the coding stuff, okay? Cool beans. Everybody ready? Oh, also... It said to share the mirror link in chat. So that way you can open it up locally and you don't have to get the stream delay at all. You see the letters right away. Okay, C, U. This is what they also do. We learn new tactics. You type out all the letters in spaces and all caps in the chat once we get the, the, the biggest word in the game. So curious is it? So uh, we got sour. Also, they told us, like, they're official people that if you use an anagram solver, it's cheating. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll stop. Nobody else going to play? Should we just skip it or you want, or do you all want to play? It's okay if you don't. Yeah, it is kind of hard. It's like, it's like it knew that we let made it to level 61 in this channel and it's like well, this should be cake thanks for joining today obsidian, obsidian. how are you thanks for joining today jed 81 vb hey jed welcome back oreo <laughs> that was a hard level one Doing good, doing good, Obsidian. Glad to see you, buddy. Welcome in and thanks for joining today, Walter. Nice, Jed. I think Lee's is one. So if you if you get locked and you can't guess again, you can drop guesses and put a little uh, less than in there. There you go. That's another technique we learned from them. trying to figure out what that was all right one more four letter word between alphabetically between else and lees so it's either starting with an e or an l nice nice job card house closing it out What's the large, what's the big word? 
Oh, I know it. Let me do it. Let me do this. Yep. Nice job, uh, liminal. Use those letters. C H R O M E. Uh. Ah, oh, you just beat me, Jay Walter. Good to see you, by the way. Five letter words. I can't think of any of the words. Ah. Necro. I don't know. All right, that's good. We beat it. Level five. Here we come, Liminal, Card House, Yanni, J. Walter, Jed, Obsidian, and Jess. Good job. Keep it going, team. By the way, TTS is on... on. Yeah, there was no merch. It didn't work. I don't know why. R-E-F-U-S-E. -E. Jay's fake. <clears throat> Five letter word. I'm gonna go for that. Nice job, team. Skipping three levels. Good to see. Good to see. Level 10 is next. Here we go. I think that's pretty. L is fake. I think L is fake. Yeah, L is fake. Uh, 
in parts. Nice, Jed. Oh, the song has typing in the background. I'm like, that's not me typing. Like one more. There we go. Two more. Ramp and pram. I did it. Armpit. Nice, Jed. And here's the direct link so that you can open it up in your browser and get it more real time instead of having to wait for the stream delay to see on screen. That link in chat right there. Words on stream, WOS.GG. Brings you right to it. Hey, level 12, here we come. I think P is fake, fake, wherever. Nice job, Cardhouse. I spelled it wrong? What did I, what did I spell wrong? Wherever? That Thank you, Johnny. Maybe it was another word. It'd be nice if they showed you the red, the missing ones. <clears throat> the missing ones. Excuse me. Skipping two levels. Level 14. Here we come. Nice job, Cardhouse, Yanni, J. Walter, Jed, Liminal, Jess, and Obsidian so far. Doing great, doing great. Level 14, here we come. Ooh. Welcome in and thanks for joining today, Mario. Good to see you, Mario. I think L. Oh no. R might be fake. R is fake, R is fake, okay. We gotta figure out this hidden letter. R is, R is fake, I keep saying. F is hidden, F is hidden. Ah, family, F A M. I L Y. Use those letters in chat. Family. F A M I L Y. Fail. 
Fame. Flay. Filey. Miley. Nally. Valley. The mill. Film. Nice. Okay. Fill me. There we go. Uh, what else? Level 15 is up next, chatty. Right, uh, again. Welcome in and thanks for joining today, I too, Ivan. What's up, rival? Uh, we're playing this and then we're going to get into the buns. <laughs> thanks for joining, buddy. Uh, if you want to get more real-time updates on the game as it's going through, use that link in chat. Okie dokie, artichokies. All right, we're going to go to the next one. Level 15, let's keep it going. All right, we got hidden and fake. Sure. <laughs> Rival. Nice. Umpire. Nice job, Yanni. U M P I R E. Yep, B is fake. B is fake. U M P I R. Use those letters. Use those letters. Nice, liminal. Nice. Rump. Rumple still skin. Alright, one more word and we're good. Is Pyre? Pyre? No. Meyer? There we go. Impure. Well done, Jay Walter. Well done. Hey, we got them all on that one. Skipping three levels. Level 15, done. Again, if you want to get rid of the delay from watching it on the stream, you got the link right here. Open it up in another tab and then just type your answers in the chat on the stream chat. Like so side by side or something if you'd like. And that way you can get more instantaneous results and more time essentially to enter answers. All right. Hmm. Welcome in and thanks for joining today, Mara Joe. Hey, Mara Joe. Yeah, why wouldn't sleep work? Clomp. <laughs> nice. Clomp. C L O M P. So that's all letters that are there. We gotta still figure out this hidden letter. I think S might be fake. Ooh, good guess, Mario. Complex, that would be good. Complete. C-O-M-P-L-E-T. I got it. Use those letters. Use those letters in chat for me. C-O-M-P-L-E-T. Yep. Two E's. Am I locked still? I'm lo no, I'm not locked. Complete. Uh... 
welcome in and thanks for joining. Hey, Frank. Bucheros. Motel, nice. Couple more, couple more, couple more. Emote, nice. C O M P L E T E. Plot. Bomb. Bomb. Oh, level 18 got us. Level 18 got us. All right, big shout out to Carthouse, Yanni, J. Walter, Jed, Liminal, Jess, Obsidian, Mardio, and Mary Jo for helping us get to level 18. We'll play one more round, and then we'll get into the technical portion of the show. Pete, that was rough. Yeah, that was a rough one. It starts getting really hard. Our best record, though. Look at this. All right, back to work. Enjoy. Good luck with work. Hope it goes well, Carthouse, and then have a good rest of your Friday and weekend. Our best record, okay? We just went to level 18. Our highest record before last stream was level 28, okay? And then we had these words on stream experts come into the chat last stream through a raid and got us all the way to level 8. Thank you for the lurk, Cardhouse. Appreciate it. We were level 28, and we blew that record away thanks to those folks that joined us. Shout out to them. And went up to level 61. I don't think we're going to break that record ever again unless we have a situation like that. But, uh, yeah. Uh... Looks like Twitch is saying uh, an ad is about to come. So we're going to take a quick break. And then we'll play one more round of this and get into checking out buns. Checking out checking out my buns, okay? Yeah, 61, Frank. 61. All right, so sit tight. Don't go anywhere unless you have to. I totally understand. Leave the tab open, maybe. I appreciate it. We'll see you in a few minutes after the ad break, okay? An ad is about to start in 5,000 milliseconds. There's an ad running for 180. All right, just get your lurk on. Appreciate it. Doc's appointment. All right, hope it goes well. You're bringing the second screen in on this one, Liminal? Okay. Frank, wait, 61? Dang. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So who all doesn't have ads right now? Let's chat. What are your, If you just joined up, too, what are your wins of the week? And I would walk 500 miles. Random song in your head. For the 45 long Just months of subscribing, Shmurple. Shmurple. <laughs> Thank you, Clarkio, for the tier one Just gift sub to Mary Jo Staler. Mary Jo, that, there you go. No worries, no worries. Hey, JT, thank you so much. Appreciate you for the 45 heckin' months, man. That's a long time. Appreciate you. Thank you very much for that continued support. Mary Joe with the 28 months with that after that gift. Jed says, such an interesting game. I do agree with what you said last week that it should be in the browser and not require a download for the broadcaster. Well, so this one is. I use the browser based one, but the one that the you and a couple other folks, which by the way, Jed was somebody that came in on the stream uh through the raid last week. So thank you, Jed, for coming back too. Appreciate that. Um I think you or somebody else from that raid mentioned. Oh man, I'm blanking on it. I have it in my history and bookmarked, but like there's a certain, it's like captain.tv, right? Am I recalling correctly? And that's where it makes you install an app in order to play that version of words on stream. Uh, so I like, and they have a couple other games that look interesting and fun, but I'm not about to install that on my machine right now. So apparently with picture in picture with a minimized player window, I will still see the stream during ads. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a new thing. Relatively new thing from, uh, Twitch that they've been doing. Uh, JT says, win of the week. Carpenters just finished roughing in the basement and refinishing. Woo. Congrats on that. That's awesome to hear. Very happy for you. And thank you for sharing, JT. I'm going to take a quick potty break since we're on the ad break. we got a few more seconds left of that. So be right back, chat. <laughs> Oh my God, who the hell cares?
Well, I got just the thing to cheer you up. A computer. All right, I'm back. Also, you all made me laugh because I over as I put my headphones down and started walking away, I overheard the fart sounds. That's not what I was doing. Would I tell you if I did or not? Probably. I'm pretty open open about this type of stuff with you all. But no, it was it was number 1, not number 2. So no. Okay? No. But you made me laugh. So well done on that. Um <laughs> Who what did that? It was JT that did it? Thank you, JT. All right, let's play another round. Another round of words on stream, and then we're going to be checking out some buns. Man buns. Man buns. Let's go. Oh, let me get the link too for you all. Here's the link. Here's the link. Open that up in another tab. And then keep the chat window or stream open up in another tab side by side type of thing. And then you get more instantaneous game results. Instead of having to wait on the stream delay. Because naturally while you're watching the stream, there's going to at least be at minimum like a two to three second delay. All right. Uh, we need this. The full word. What could it be? Mm, Mariah, Maria's? Samurai, nice. S J J Walter, excellent job. Samurai. Uh, Maria's, I think, is the word. Maria. No. Raise. Smear. Smear. Rums. Rams. Mars. Mers. Mears. Auras. Jay Walter coming up with the hard ones. Oh, somebody already got Maria. Nice job, Frank. Good to see you, by the way, Frankie. Frankie boy. Arms. Sirs. Well, at least we got it. I, I struggled on that one. I didn't get any. Nice job, chat. Helping us get past level one at least. Appreciate it. Next round. Here we go. Hmm. Spurt. Spit. Spirit, S P I R I T. That's a good guess. Very good guess. Cert. Uh, per. Pity. RLPS. Welcome in. Rips. Thanks for joining today, Taiwan number one. Taiwan number one. Welcome in. Happy to have you here. All right. So far, we got Jay Walter, Liminal, JT, Yanni, Jed, Frank, myself, Taiwan number one. And Nafron, let's keep it rolling. Hmm. Nice. Forward? What is that? Forward. 
crow word. Arrow. Arrow. Dwarf? That's not, that's not a dwarf. Oh. Missed that one. Road. Road. The roads. Nice. Keep it going, chat. Keep it going. <clears throat> Fard. So close to fart. Roar. What is a fado? F fado? All right, one more. Four letter word between faro and ford. Aura. Nice. I want number one. Appreciate you. I see you. You must be a uh, avid words on stream player using those less than carrot techniques. Like it. I like it. All right. Uh, thing. Like nothing. Okay, W H I T I N G. Whiting. And Withing. Nice job, Taiwan number one. Hint. Wit. You're new to this game? Really? No. You're using techniques that, like, the, the pros. Or the experts use. So, folks, when you see t somebody post in chat with the the arrows pointing at the word, those are other guesses, but they're locked from being able to guess again, so they're giving them to you. There we go. Working as a team, maybe we can beat our record or get close to it. Level 61 from last stream. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Esophagus. Psycho. Pol polish. Okay. Also, here's the link. Here's the link in case you want to open it directly. X is fake. Nice job, Taiwan. Uh, we got ship. Hey, Code John. Good to see you, hips. All right, hips. My hips don't lie. Welcome in and thanks for joining today, Alice underscore production. Hey, Alice. Welcome in. Nice job, Jay Walter. Oh, we got soil. Okay. Uh... Ooh, soft was one. I won. I forget to look at third column for four letter words. I can see that happen in Jen. You want to focus on the, the largest words first, you know? Makes sense. Welcome in and thanks for joining today, Just Death. Hey, JD. This is our last round of words on stream, then we're going to get into the buns. Nice job. We're skipping three levels still. Level 11. Going to level 14. Uh, Taiwan is number one right now. Uh, Liminal, myself, Jay Walter, JD, Jed, uh, Yanni, Kobuchon, JT, Frank, Nafron, and JD. Marbles. What about marbles? 
Is that a word guess that you're dropping in there? You play this a lot. I figured, Taiwan. I figured. Uh, mean. Gotta go off to a meeting. Alright, Sean. Good luck with the meeting. Hope it goes well. That's a good guess. Enigma? I would have thought. Is it marbles on stream after this? No, Alice. Sorry. We're gonna get into coding, programming, computer programming after this. Magnet. Nice. Okay. M-A-G-N-E-T. Use those letters, chat. Use those letters. Uh, am I locked or not? Nat. There we go. Nat. Agent. Uh, somebody got agent. Mange. Team. Neat. Meta. M-A-G-N-E-T. So we play coding game. No, no, no. I'm going to be, we're going to be practicing some, pro we're going to check out some new programming technology. Nice job, Taiwan. I'll show you in a second here. Um, I'll get you a direct link for it, actually. This is what we're going to be checking out today. They just had their 1.0 release, Alice. <clears throat> I dropped the link in chat if you want to take a look at it ahead of time. Uh, all right, what else? We got main and mean, alphabetically four-letter word. Dang. Mate. There we go. Nice job, Cardhouse, closing it out. All right, level 17, here we come. It's going to start getting harder. Taiwan's still number one. Jay Walter, myself, Jed, Liminal, Yanni, Kobuchon, JD. Moving up the ranks, Frank, JT, Nafron, Cardhouse, and Obsidian. We got a good group good group of people playing today. Love it. Uh, Evolve. Rover. A. Voter. All right, still haven't figured out the hidden letter. Turnover, T-U-R-O-O-V-E-R. Use those letters I just shared in chat. Turnover, T-U-R-N-O-V-E-R. -E oh, uh, it's got to be five-letter words or more. Overturn. Nice, Jay Walter, good job. Rerun, good job, Jed. Return. Okay, I got you, Taiwan. Router. Somebody gets router. Taiwan sharing there. Thanks for joining today, Pranav Goal underscore 29. What's up, Pranav? Good to see you, buddy. Overrun. Okay, Rich. T U R N O V E R. Use those letters. Don't pay attention to what's on the words on stream. Turner. Noter. Turner. Noter. Why aren't those working? Good to see you as well. Thank you for now. Appreciate that. Trove. Why wouldn't why wouldn't Noter work? Retro, nice. So we reached our goal, so that's good. Now it's just icing on the cake. Router, nice job, Taiwan. Um Torer. I was trying to think what it would be. I am Iron Man. I am Iron Man. Router. Got you, I got you. Overt. Oh, nerd. Trev. Oh. Toner. Nice job, Jay Walter. Less second one there. Again, here's the link. Oop, that's not the link anymore. This is the link if you want to go directly to the game and not have to wait for the stream delay to show it up. We'll go to the next round, level 20. It's going to get really hard now. All right, chat, be prepared. This is our last round. And then we got to get into some, some work, okay? So, shout out to everybody that's got us here so far. Let's keep it going as far as we can. Bishop. Shape. Caper. Beaches. Beach. 
Oh, Jed got spice. S P I S E. Hospice. H O I S P I C E. Use those letters in the chat. Hospice. H O S P I C E. Copies. Nice. Spies. Oh, nope. That's not going to work. Uh. Chose. There we go. Uh, epox chips. What is that word? I don't know why I did that to you, Jay Walter. It says swearing. Scope. Nice. Good job. Again, H O S P I C E. Use those letters in the chat that I'm dropping in there. Epox. I got you. I got you, Taiwan. All right, we're one more word away. Just gotta get one more word. This is easy. We're doing good. There it is. Taiwan. Was that Taiwan? Yep. What is Copes? Copes? C O P E S? C O P E S? Is that a word? Yep. I just got that one. All right. Two more five letter words. Epics. All right. Alphabetically between hopes and scope. Five letter word. It starts with an H or an S. Poise. Well played. Taiwan. Killing it. Welcome in and thanks for joining today, Hypescript. Hypescript Tea Time. Good to see you. Good to see you. Folks, if you want to get real time results from the game without having to wait for the stream delay, join the link there, wordsonstream.gg. And that way you don't have to wait. You are needed. Yes, JD. We need, because what ends up happening is a lot of times people get, when you guess a word correctly, let me, if, for folks that maybe haven't played this as often as, like, for instance, Taiwan, who's an expert in here. Um, when you get a word, guess a word correctly, you get locked from being able to guess again for a certain amount of time until the progress bar in the middle, you'll see in a second, uh, will, uh, unlock you and then you can guess again. So what ends up happening is you might have a free guess still because you haven't guessed anything and folks that are locked will share their guess. They'll give a lot of words in chat. So if you pay attention to like Taiwan or Jay Walter was doing it too, they'll put the little, less than sign like you see what i just did there in the chat i'll bring it over here so you can see this little less than sign so like maybe one of the guesses that they have that they know will work they'll do that and that that's for you to take and use that guess as your guess and you don't have to worry about thinking about a new word just use that word okay that's the whole strategy we work as a team is the idea okay and if you want to remove so right the other thing i keep calling out and that's why i keep sharing this link if you go to this link in your browser it, it will show you real time exactly when the moment happens in the game so that you don't have to wait for the delay of the stream. Because naturally, when you're watching a live stream, that's at a minimum, even with low latency turned on, you're going to have at least a two or three second delay. So you're going to be behind. We're going to be at the end of the game before you even really see it on stream type of thing. So that's why you go to that link to speed it up and have better chances of getting your guests in before the end of the round or the end of, the, end of that level. All right, so... Level 23, can you link again? Yes, yeah, it's right here. Boom. I'm gonna wait two seconds here and then we'll click continue. That's a strategy I learned from folks, the experts that joined our, had raided into our stream last week. To share that link. All right. Um, Code with Sean reads R E E D S. We need to get that full. What is that? Six, seven letter word though. Uh, degrees D E G R E E S. Oops. Use those letters D E G R E E S. Degree. Got it. Edgers. There we go. There we go. Greeds. D.
It gotta be five letter words. Five letter words or more. Keep that in mind. There we go. Uh, Taiwan's got another answer in there. Reese Setter. S E D E R. Surge. Nice, Jay Walter. No, those guesses aren't. Reese and Setter don't work. Sedge. Nice job. TypeScript tea time. Wow, we are we're rocking it. We might beat we might beat our previous record again two weeks in a row all right let's see if we can get past level 26 to 28 or 20 if we get to level 29 again two weeks in a row chef's kiss right there let's take stock of who helped us get this far though taiwan j walter myself jed liminal code with sean jd yanni f boucher jt nafron type tea time card house and obsidian town appreciate you all let's keep it going Oh, I feel like a five-year-old. I'm helping. <laughs> you are helping for sure. All right, we got a, a seven-letter word again. Co with Sean got dries two rounds in a row or levels in a row. You got the first word, Co with Sean. You're not a five-year-old. Rides, R-I-D-E-S. Use those letters. Uh, sired. Peroxide. That's a good good guess. Desire. Desire work. D E S I R E. Reside. Why didn't that work? It was somebody already guessed that, I guess. reside work there we go r e s i d e you gotta figure out this hidden letter the seven letter we need at least one seven letter word to get there this might be it chat this might be it sex god liminal <laughs> Welcome and thank oh, you there we go. Today at month. Hey, Dubsman Peroxide. Dentist. Redose. There's a two Ds in there. No O. Derides. D-E-R-I-D-E-S. Hey, as, hey, we did pretty good. Level 26, pretty good. We tried. We tried. We tried. It was a good run. Pretty close to our previous le record. I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. Good game. Good game. Appreciate everybody playing. Again, thanks to Taiwan, Jay Walter, myself, Jed, Liminal, Kovac, Sean, JD, Thank Yanni, for the 52 long months of subscribing F. Boucher, JT, Types for Tea Time, Nafron, Card House, Obsidian, Talon. Appreciate you all. Thank you for playing. Hope you enjoyed. We're going to call it there, though, so we can get into the technical portion of the stream. Don't worry. Next, next week, when I come back, we'll do the same thing. We always play a little bit of this. Uh, Dubsman, thank you so much, dude, for the 52 months of prime gaming, buddy. It's a heckin' long time. Heck yeah, round of applause. 52, 52 months. All right, so uh, that leads us into changing categories now. Software and game development. If you've never seen folks stream about this, you're going to see it now. Not sick of him yet. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. If you've not heard of it before, if you search for Bun, Bun JS, good sign, good sign. The technical portion of the stream is sponsored by Fart. It is. We are going to be taking a look at Bun. Whose buns? My buns. There's the link in the chat if you'd like. They just released version 1.0 of this, okay? Bun is basically another JavaScript runtime. So if you're a programmer, you know about Node.js likely, or have at least heard of it. And it's a it's a runtime that allows you to write JavaScript that 
runs outside of a web browser because typically in the past we only were able to use javascript in web browser and then node.js gave us that capability to run build out apis application programmable interfaces servers and stuff like that um and then electron came along to like allow us to use those web technologies to create uh like windows apps and mac os apps and stuff like that and it exploded from there right uh and then since then we're going down a little bit of a history uh deno came out next which was created by ryan Dahl, who was actually somebody that was one of the people that created node.js and he, he split away from node.js and decided to go on his own to try and you think about it this way right many of you that are programmers you know you or you've likely run into this situation where you you're working on a project for a while maybe it's over years maybe it's only a few months but you work on a project for a while and you get to a point where you're like oh man I, you know it'd be nice there's some things to the decisions i made early on that i wish i had maybe chose a different way to go or approach with this and it'd be great if i could rewrite this thing or whatever right and that's essentially what i feel happened with Ryan Dahl. Like I'm spe I'm speculating here. Not nothing for sure. You can go see actually there's a famous uh famous video presentation basically when Ryan Dahl revealed uh Deno. I'm trying to find the link to it real quick. Where is that? Why is it not coming up? Ryan Dahl, why? People Google his net worth. Apology? What did he do? Why did he apologize? What? I regret says the creator of Node.js and Dawn. Oh. 10 things I regret about Node.js. That's at JSConf EU back in 2018. This is the video I was thinking of. Hello. Hey. Um, so, yeah, I kind of wanted to give a different talk about some other stuff, but that wasn't ready. And so this is kind of a, a makeup talk. Uh, it's been some years since node came out and it's kind of stabilized so i'll share the link in the chat you can go ahead and watch oops go ahead and watch all this volume is like yeah yeah i'm not gonna watch the whole thing anyway um because it's, tw it's 26 minutes long number one thanks for hitting that follow button yeah no problem appreciate that follow taiwan number one appreciate you we'll be playing where if you enjoy words on stream streams with a group of folks we do it every friday around the same time that you whatever time it is by you right now it's usually around this time and then we get into this stuff this technical portion so that's all you play yeah totally yeah it's cool man you're awesome at it so congrats on that um sorry we just got distracted for a second there um, so anyway, Ryan Dahl was the person behind, or one of the people behind Node.js. And then, you know, as you can imagine as a developer on any project, you have things where you wish you had done differently on that project. And so th that's what essentially my understanding based on this talk that I've watched him do and just learned about, that was the inspiration behind Deno. So that was the next iteration of a new runtime for JavaScript. So first it was Node.js, then came Deno, which Deno's objective was to um well i guess let's go to the website so you can see it's rather than me talk about it let me let me show it so you go to deno.com i'll drop the link of that in the chat and deno.com you can see it's next generation javascript runtime it's been in version 1.0 plus for quite some time now so it's a little bit it's more mature than bun which we're going to be diving into today uh and then node.js is the most mature one so one thing is like i think there, there's a significant or a decent amount of developers that have adopted deno in place of node um and as a result of that deno has improved i believe there's been more community support around it there's more there's lots of ways that you evaluate technology that you should be doing um 
as best as you possibly can to help you make a decision on what technologies to use for your projects, right? So if you're looking at what runtime to use, these are some of the things you're going to consider. It's like how mature is the technology? How uh, widespread is its use? Not like, is it fair? It doesn't have to be amazingly popular or the most popular technology to use for your project, but it has to be fairly popular because otherwise, if you're the guinea pig, so to speak, the bleeding edge, you know, you're running on the bleeding edge in this case, you're going to be left to try and figure things out on your own with not necessarily a lot of support unless the team behind it are readily available and they have some type of support system in place to assist you when you run into issues while using that technology. So that's why I bring that up. That's something to take into consideration when evaluating technologies to use for a project. So in this case, Deno is definitely way more mature now than it was when it first came out, obviously. And it has uh, improved in the sense of making, for instance, being more backwards compatible with Node.js and NPM. Because that's one of the biggest things. Like Node.js, if you're a JavaScript developer and you've been using Node.js for years now, or, or, or what have you, whatever it may be, you you have projects around that that you might want to migrate over into um, into using these newer runtimes. And you might be used to how that works and that type of thing. And so the idea, in order for these runtimes to get better adoption, they need to be somewhat, if not fully compatible with the previous runtime that they're trying to you know improve upon, essentially, so that it makes it easy for the transition for developers that are used to that original runtime to move over to this newer one, right? In addition to that, you kind of have to have like some, you know, fancy headline type of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You need to have some type of like really, uh, oh man, staple feature that stands out to draw people. Because like if Node is suiting people's needs, then what's their reason for a developer to choose Deno in this case when that first came out over Node? What is the, what's the advantage of that, right? And if it's not a significant enough advantage to draw developers away, then it's not going to get a ton of adoption and it's just going to fizzle out type of thing. That hasn't happened at this point, which goes to show you that Deno does have some draw to it and interest because of the features that it provides that base, based on being an improvement from Node.js, right? So just a note there. Let me pause there for a second and see what folks are saying in the chat. Uh, so that's when Bun was announced. Bun was announced, um, sometime last year, I want to say around this time last year, I think I forget exactly. And then they, they just reached 1.0, uh, to this morning. It was supposed to be yesterday, but they had to, uh, resolve an issue and the release came out today. They pu pushed it today. Okay. Uh, what else am I seeing here? Taiwan says, I know Python C++ SQL. Is it like those? Kind of. So Python is probably the next closest one to JavaScript uh, in that it's a, uh, don't quote me on this because I'm going to, uh, it's an interpreted language, whereas uh, C++ is a compiled language. SQL is, I don't know, actually, maybe there's some folks in chat that can speak more intelligently to this, but SQL's, I know SQL is a database language to do database queries. I don't know how that gets uh, executed by the computer, like what type, what's the type of language that's considered if it's interpreted compiled pro, you know whatever it may be um so i don't know off the top of my head but hopefully that helps answer your question taiwan a little bit the logo makes you hungry nephron for bun yeah it's a pretty 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 fun and creative uh i don't see I, well i i wonder why they named it bun i don't know if there's any answer out there right now but i'm, I'm curious about that jd says is it supposed to drop be a drop in for node yes so i believe deno is its intention nowadays is to be drop-in and bun. Absolutely. They've made it very clear that they want it to be a drop-in replacement for node. So, and I think they realize that because in order for them to really get, have success and get widespread adoption, it needs to at least be able to do that. So, all right, I think I'm caught up. Any other questions that come along, feel free to drop them in the chat. Oh, wait, I see Frank has one bun, Deno, NPM. Those are different than frameworks, right? So bun, Deno and Node are JavaScript runtimes. They use different underlying technology in order to interpret the JavaScript language, that the code that you write, and then convert that to uh, bytecode, right? Whereas NPM is a package management tool and scripting tool, okay? Bun has that built in, and I believe, if I recall correctly, Deno does too. So that's something of a difference between Bun, Deno, 
from Node.js in that Node.js, while when you install Node, it will also install NPM essentially. So it comes bundled into it, but it still feels something separately. Like if you need to update NPM, you update that separately versus when you want to update to a newer version of Node as an example, right? So hopefully that helps. Now frameworks to me, like a framework in the JavaScript ecosystem would be a backend framework. Let's talk about it that way would be like express or fastify or, um, happy or Hano. I don't know how to pronounce those necessarily. Those are, or Koa is another one. Those are web frameworks to help you, uh, not have to write as much code to create a server using Node.js and JavaScript. Okay. Bun and Deno kind of have a lot of that built in so that you don't have to rely on Express or some web framework to get you going. It's a little bit more of a higher level in the sense of what code it takes to get a web server going to host like HTML files or send, send an API response to a request that might come in, that type of thing. So that's one of the key differences there too. And then there's front-end frameworks, right? Which is more of the browser. We're getting out of the scope of JavaScript runtimes for the server side and we're talking about JavaScript in the browser, in which case there you have front end frameworks that are like Angular or Vue or React or Svelte, right? Those types of things are front end frameworks that help you build out rich web applications for the browser. Okay. Keep the questions coming. Loving it. Appreciate it. So we uh, switching back here. We're talking about Deno again. So Ryan Dahl was like, Hey, I want to start fresh and try and improve upon what I did the things that I would like to do differently than what I did in Node. So I'm building out this Deno, which has native TypeScript support and JSX, which is something interesting about that, that uh, Node doesn't have currently. Although I believe they're heading in that direction, if I recall correctly, what I heard. Um, but I might be wrong on that, so don't quote me on that. Secure by default. So that's interesting in this. So as an example of what that means, um, maybe you don't want your server to have file access on the hosting operating system that your application is running on, right? Node by default, at least in previous versions, maybe the newer versions, they might be working towards this, um, gives you access. You have access to the file system, the underlying file system on the operating system. You don't need to turn on those permissions per se for your node application. It just comes, but you might not need that, right? So like that's something that leaves you not necessarily vulnerable, uh, you know, inherently, but the fact that it has that permission through that executable that's running the node application, that could potentially lead to issues or something that might potentially go wrong. Whereas you have basically Deno gives you more control of like, hey, my application is going to need network access. My application is going to need file system uh, reading and writing access. I get to choose to turn those permissions on for this application that's going to run in this environment and the rest is off by default essentially you get what i'm saying so that's one of the key differences between node and deno as an example triple b node 20 starts to change that yes exactly there's been significant uh strides and progress going on with the latest version the latest even version of node um, that's out today so that's what's going on with node and deno so Deno has been out, I don't know how long it is but now, but it's 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 more mature, it's older than, here's actually, here's a good comparison we can look at between Deno and Node. It's older than um, Bun. So one of the key differences is like uh, granular runtime security, we talked about that just now, dozens of dependencies and config files for dev tools where, yeah, so that's another, like going back to what I was saying before, like if you wanted to create a web server, you can do that with just like vanilla Node.js but it's way more code to write that a little bit more cumbersome. Let me put it that way. Whereas there's these third party tools like express, like fastify that simplifies spinning up an API server as an example, but that's like third party. It's not native to which I don't think that's necessarily a problem. I have had great success using express for like every project that I've used for Node.js throughout. I don't know. It's been like eight plus years or so. I've been doing strictly JavaScript development. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm not, so don't take that the wrong way that I'm saying that's wrong or anything. I'm just saying you as a new developer, maybe somebody new to Node.js don't know that. And you start getting into the, you start realizing that the mindset in this ecosystem is everything is built piecemeal, very modular. 
and you have to pull in and know of and learn of these other things in the ecosystem in order to help jumpstart, kickstart your projects and fill the gaps for things that have already been done. So you don't have to repeat, you know, uh, yourself or re re rewrite the wheel as you will, that phrase that we use a lot in this industry. So you have to kind of become and do a lot of learning in that regard. Whereas if you go with Deno, a lot of that is built into the runtime so that you don't have to rely on some third party open source library or framework or something to help you, you know, remove some of that cruft, if you will. Right. So that's another key difference there. And, and take note of these things that Deno is providing. A lot of this is going to be similar with bun. And uh, then we'll talk about like what might give bun us an advantage over both of these. Okay. Um, so built in TypeScript, JSX, formatter, linter, and testing, uh, embeddable with Rust and Tokyo. I'm not sure what that, I know what Rust is, not heard of Tokyo before, but um, maybe that's beneficial to some folks that are familiar with that. Uh, built with web standards API, which is good, right? Having standards that things are followed, kind of like in the browsers, the browser ecosystem, all the browser vendors, at least nowadays, back in the day, they weren't necessarily great about this, but they, nowadays they're better about following the same web standards and imp implementing the right JavaScript APIs that are uh, defined based on the the committee behind where what features should be provided for JavaScript and that sort of thing, right? So when it comes to web standards, it's great to see browsers kind of accommodating and, and finding that... Um, Finding that uh, common ground, what's the word I'm looking for? Symmetry, maybe, is that what I'm looking for? I don't know. F having that that sync, okay, where everybody's at the same position in the latest version of each browser, they're supporting whatever the latest standard is for JavaScript and web APIs. Um, so that's nice that Deno is following suit with that, but now for running JavaScript on the server type of thing. And then a comprehensive standard library. So that's the thing. The mm, I don't know, I feel like, Node.js' standard library has improved significantly in the latest versions. This may this may be a moot point at this at this point in time. Um, whereas when Deno first came out, yes, I would say that was a significant difference between Deno and Node.js. All right, so that's Deno. Deno is pretty cool. If you haven't toyed with it, try it out. It's nice that it has, like one of the big things for me personally that I like that that. So let me put it this way: I haven't adopted Deno because there hasn't been like a significant like I was talking about before, a uh, feature or, uh, you know, highlighted type of functionality that makes me want to jump from what I know already, right? If I'm starting a new project today, I want to be productive and efficient on day one right away. I don't want to have to learn a new runtime and what's available in it um, in order to, because I, for me, in any developer's job, you're getting, your performance rating is based on what you're delivering. And if some, learning something new sometimes will slow that down, and you could get dinged on that sometimes. Not necessarily, but I'm just pointing that out as a something that could influence developers' decisions, right? So for me, I haven't had, you know, whenever I'm starting a new project, even on my side projects where there's not a lot of pressure on this stuff, I'm sticking with what I know right now. And I don't know Deno all that well. So let me put that out there too, in all fairness. Maybe there's some things that I might be saying or uh, pointing out about Deno that's not correct or a misunderstanding. If that's the case, feel free to correct me on that. I'm open to it. So, um, but one of the things that would draw me to Deno is I like to use, well, I have a love-hate relationship with TypeScript, but I think part of the reason I have a love-hate relationship to, with TypeScript is because I'm having to pull in other third-party packages and, conf and set up configuration um, in my projects to enable me to be able to develop with TypeScript. And I, I wonder, I'm curious if a lot of that gets cut out and, and is no longer necessary with something like Deno or Bun that has built-in TypeScript support like that. So as an example, like in uh, in a Node project, in order for me to quickly run in development mode uh, something that's written in TypeScript, I need to... For, actually, maybe some of you don't know about TypeScript. TypeScript essentially is a superset of JavaScript. So it's like a, it's it's adding typing safety a bit to JavaScript code, but like at... at before runtime, essentially. Whereas with JavaScript, if you use that vanilla JavaScript by itself, at runtime, you might run into issues and bugs where you you stumble over yourself, essentially, in the way you wrote your code, especially if you're new to JavaScript. Uh, you won't realize, like, it, it just has a lot of quirks to it that's built into the language, okay? And TypeScript helps you avoid those quirks to some degree. 
because of the fact that it's it's transpiling the TypeScript code into vanilla JavaScript. And during that process, it can lint your code and alert you to potential issues that you are you might have or run into at runtime when executing that JavaScript code. So that's that's the main thing about TypeScript there. So what's nice, so what I have to do right now in a Node.js project is I have to use something like TS Node or one of those third-party tools that are a dev tool that we were talking about before um, in order to transpile my TypeScript code and run and execute it all in one shot kind of thing. It seems that in Deno, you don't need to do that. It does it for you behind the scenes as an example. Let me catch up on chat here. Uh, competition is often good for the user, right? Exactly. That's what makes me excited about this. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to hype up like bun and like everybody should go to use bun right now. I think the most beneficial piece of having something like bun and adding to the competition of JavaScript runtimes is it's going to level up the whole space together. It's going to compete. So bun is going to compete with Deno and Deno is going to compete with bun and node and so forth. And everything's going to drive each one of the, the people behind each of these projects to try and improve and get better and bring better developer experiences for, so it's, it's going to help the community as a whole, the fact that there's more competition. So I agree with that, Frank. That's my, that's my thoughts on it. Like, I'm not saying, Hey, bun is the best thing. Everybody should go use that run to that right now. Drop node completely. No, I'm just like, Hey, this is good. I personally want to just check it out. Maybe in my side projects type of thing, which is what we're going to do today. And, you know, if you think it fits well for the project that you have and the, and the requirements that you're trying to fulfill in that project, then give it a shot. It's at 1.0 release now. If you were asking before prior, before 1.0, I would definitely say no, wait until they get to this point. But now they're at this point, I think they're saying they're production ready. So give it a shot. And their community is growing. I'm going to stick with Ligma. Yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Triple B. Pranav says, yeah, TS node is a saver. Yeah. I like TS node again. It's just, it's something that that's yet another thing that you need to become aware of as a developer in order to be successful and accomplish that essentially, you know, Nafron says, now I want to try bun for a rewrite since I know what to do. I can try a new tech to compare it. There you go. Yeah. Liminal says Golang provides a lot in their core library. Yes. So does like Python and Java and .NET, .NET especially. That was like, one, that was one of the languages that I worked pre predominantly in a past job. And uh, it does come with quite a bit. Uh, Triple B says, I love that Deno and Bun are pushing Node to do better. I, I agree, man. 100%. Did you mention if it was strongly typed? Well, so Bun, let's jump into Bun now. So we talked about Node, a little bit of history of Node and how Deno came to be from the creator of Node. One of the folks behind Node then went on to create Deno to try and improve and iterate on what they would like to do differently from Node.js. And then Bun came along. So if we go back to Bun's website, Bun, their whole objective is to be a fast JavaScript runtime and they they put out a great video actually. I wonder if it's it's in here. Where's the video? It's a very well done, professionally put together video. I'm skimming through this real. We're gonna go through this, but I'm just trying to find the video again real quick. Yeah, I'll just like. And some people already have videos about it. Where is it? Um, if I go to Twitter and, and Jared Sumner, Jared Sumner, I believe. posted the video whoa 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 maybe it's on here this account doesn't exist what
what the heck happened? This seems really old. There's no way. I was literally looking at their tweets earlier. Why is this not like updating? Is it because I'm not signed in? So it's like Twitter's like, no, I'm not going to show you their tweets or something. So dumb. What is going on with Twitter, man? It's such a crap platform now. This I'm literally like, so on this screen, this is what we see. Like his latest post is January 19th. That's not true. His latest post was September 7th. Bun 1.0 is coming out. Like I'm looking at it on my other machine over here. <laughs> What's going on, Twitter? I'm signed in on this machine. I'm not signed in on the one that we're all looking at on my on the stream. It's so, so weird. And it's saying oven sh doesn't exist. When I click on it on my my other laptop here, oh yeah, the account doesn't exist. What the heck? What in the world? All right, let me see where they put the, what YouTube channel this is on. Bun, yeah. Uh, okay, filter to just channels. There it is, okay. X Twitter is dead, says JT. All the cool cats are on Mastodon. All right, let's check out this video. I'll turn the volume up so you can all hear it. Pause that. Bun 1.0. So that's Jared. He's the guy behind it. Finally here. Bun is a complete toolkit for building, running, testing, and debugging JavaScript and TypeScript, from a small script to a full stack server side rendered application. You'll see. So there's something. Um, this is not me poking fun. Okay. Let me be very clear here. There might be something you know. There's gonna be different people in here, and I want you to just take note of how they feel on camera. And you could you could definitely tell. Uh, there's some folks that are like really good on camera, and they've like either had a lot of practice or training or whatever it is. And then there's, there's some folks that are a little like you could tell they feel a little uncomfortable, and I feel for them. And but regardless, I, I'm just bringing that up because you might get that sense and you might feel that. I definitely felt that the first time I saw this video. And I'm like, I was just like, oh man, I wish I would, be, I would love to just chat with them and, and, and like before they made this video to try and, and help as much as possible as I can. So there's that engineers versus sales. True. But there's some, I'm, I'm an engineer and I feel like I'm, at this point, I feel way comfortable on camera than when I first started. Can I share the URL? Yes. See how bun Here's the direct link to the video. Frank, enjoy. Uh... Did you mention if it was strong type? I'm guessing no, since it's JavaScript. Uh, I smell a little Win95 vibe on that page. Just saying, yeah. On X, things vanish so quickly. Yeah, Pranav, not Twitter anymore. I know. Well, here's the thing. Let's talk about this really quick before we get into this video, okay? Really quick side note tangent on, on Twitter. Why are we allowing Elon to rebrand this thing? Everybody like was so like, oh, how could he change Twitter to X? And it's like, if you really feel that way, stop calling it X. I keep seeing articles or blog posts or whatever. They're like X slash Twitter. Don't even do that. Just say Twitter. Everybody knows Twitter. You know, you want to use just Twitter. So don't, don't, don't give in to calling it Twitter. That's kind of like Facebook wanting to be called meta. It's Facebook. It's still Facebook. They're not going to distance. For me, at least they're not going to distance themselves from the bad press of the name of Facebook. No, you're still Facebook, the company. You're still run by Mark Zuckerberg and all that leadership that doesn't care about people's privacy. And you're not going to try and dupe me, at least, into trying to think you're a different company at, at Meta versus Facebook. No. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Okay? And so Twitter is still Twitter. Don't call, If we all just gather, gather together and stop calling it X... Then, then it's not going to work. We, as a, as a group, a consensus, can stop that from happening. If all of you really did have such a problem with the name change, you wouldn't call it X. But so many people who clearly were like, "Ah, oh, I'm not going to X. What a terrible thing. What a terrible branding. Oh, blah, blah, blah. 
but yet they're calling it they're calling it X now instead of calling it Twitter still. Just keep calling it Twitter. All right, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome in the world of old people. I guess, I guess, I, yeah. Is that how I sound? I sound like a grandpa. Back in my day, we used to call it Twitter, not X. Bald bearded builder says, "Stick around for the next segment." Arcio <laughs> stream called, "Get off my lawn." <laughs> sure. Yeah. Stick around. JD says, "If we don't call it X, then how can I say I just excreted?" <laughs> I noticed they started changing instead of retweet, they called it repost now. Ugh. Frank says, I know many salespeople who aren't used to camera. There you go. See? Uh, Liminal says, sounds like they're fundamentally changing the app, hence the name. I totally get that. Like, fine. But, like, we can resist. We can resist. We, they, I mean, I mean, he might still just do what he's going to do, right? But, um, they, we have power. In numbers, in mass. All right, thank you for the lurk, JD. Um, just double checking on work stuff. Hold on, I got tagged and things, so that's that's all I'm doing here. Um, we have power in numbers. We don't have to give in to the change. They need us to be using the platform in order for them to make money and be successful. I'm just saying. All tissues are called Kleenex, and nobody cares. They had that's the thing though, Frank. They had that type of like, you know, in-house name, or uh, what is it called? What's that expression? Household name. They had that type of household name over that that type of social platform, Twitter, tweeting, retweeting, and all of that, right? And he's just. I mean, again, I'm not. I'm not one to say anything. I've never been an executive and run a company before. So like take it with a grain of salt type of thing. I recognize that I'm not naive to that. So who am I to say what's good or what's not? But that just seems wild to me, you know? So yeah. Uh, did I miss anything else? If we don't call it X, da, 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 da. you prefer X Kappa? Yeah. All right. So let's continue watching back to the video, back to this, back to buns. And uh, take note of the camera work. Life as a developer, more productive, less frustrating, and most importantly, more fun. Let's jump in. Can you hear it okay? Bun exists for a simple reason. JavaScript is too complicated. Now, some of this complexity is warranted. The JavaScript ecosystem is popular and it's mature, and there's a lot of great tools out there, and that's great. But in other ways, things have just gotten unnecessarily complicated. Our repos have a thousand node modules and half a dozen configuration files with plugins and adapters to get everything to play nice together. Most code we write has to be passed through an opaque build system of transpilers and bundler plugins before it's in a form that can actually be executed by Node.js. So I think part of what he's talking about there is what we were just talking about before. If you write in TypeScript and you, you, you can't just, you can't run TypeScript. It has to be transpiled to JavaScript and then Node can run it. In Bun, it's like they're going to do that for you, essentially. Most code we write has to be passed through an opaque build system of transpilers and bundler plugins before it's in a form. And then when it comes to bundling, it's like, if you're not familiar with that, for folks that are new to the JavaScript ecosystem, bundling is about uh, trying to make the code smaller so it has less of an impact. It, it's mostly, bundling's mostly needed for the front end, not for the back end. Because the, when it comes to web development, you want to send as small of files as possible because it keeps your web application performant and support. Like, it's very responsive and snappy for people of all different types of network connections that they have, right? So there might be some folks that don't have great internet in their area and they, you know, they're working on like dial-up speeds. Let's put it that way. Not everyone has like blazing fast gigabit speed internet at their home or in their community, that type of thing. And so you, you need to, if you want to have success, you want people to be, um, have a good experience on your website, you need it to be performant and have great performance on all different types, all different network connections. So what we do to help with that, or one of the things to do to help with that as web developers is we bundle and minify and, and do things to reduce the size of the files that contain the code that runs the web app. Okay. So that's what that's going on there for folks that are not familiar with it. So. TypeScript transpiling for the server and then bundling for things like front end, which we're not talking about the bun, the, the bun. We're not talking about the front end with when it comes to bun, but 
folks tend to do that. Like they'll they'll bundle things like maybe into a single executable type. Or you know that, that can situation. actually be executed by Node.js. And to top it off, we're in the middle of a years long and very painful transition between Common JS and ES modules, each of which comes with different syntax and module resolution rules. Bun eliminates eliminates unnecessary complexity without throwing away everything that's great about JavaScript, the ecosystem, the conventions, the libraries, and the frameworks that we all know and love. There are a lot of tools in the bun. I'm going to give you a heads up. This, this guy here is great on camera. Props to Ashkan. Toolkit, but the crown jewel is the bun runtime. Bun is a drop-in replacement for Node.js that's backwards compatible and can run TypeScript and TSX files, no dependencies necessary. But most importantly, it's fast. Now let's start. Like, I don't know if you can tell, I'm sorry, this is me, like, because of like what I do for work and stuff like that, like, and the like training that I've had and whatnot, like, Ashkan here, like, reminds, like, the way he delivers his content it remind it looks he looks ai generated i get yeah maybe uh, but like his delivery reminds me of people that are doing like keynotes like like on big stages for big companies at big conferences you know what i'm saying like uh like tim cook at uh you know the apple conferences that come out like wwdc or whatever or um uh what's his name my old boss at microsoft why am I blanking on his name? Oh my gosh. But anyway, you know, executives at, at big companies doing keynotes talks. Bill no, not Bill Gates. No. The current the current CEO. Why am I blanking on that? Frank? <laughs> Frank, who's your ultimate boss? Do you remember do you remember his name? Satya Nadella. Him when he does those keynotes? Yeah, exactly. When he does those keynotes, he like it's got that it's got that certain cadence, certain uh, enunciations and stuff like that uh, that like executives do, and that's what I get from Oshkon, and it's it's fantastic. Small, if we run a simple hello world script, it takes Bun only eight milliseconds. In Node.js, it takes thirty-two. That's a four x difference just to say hello. And if we're running TypeScript, things get a little trickier. We need to transpile our TypeScript file before we can even run it. With ES build, the time to build and run takes about 40 milliseconds. With this stuff, like, what was, what was that? Oh, okay. I thought I heard like glass breaking or something. This here, <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm like, this is impressive. But in, I, I wonder, what do I want to say here? What I want to say is, while it's it's very much impressive to see how much they've improved the speed of things, I want to know how it actually feels when when using it, right? Because it's one thing to be like, oh, it's eight milliseconds, but like, is it noticeable difference for developers that are using this versus some of these other things that are going on here? You know, like the jump from forty milliseconds with ES build to eight milliseconds is that really going to be that noticeable? I don't know, maybe. Maybe in like a, a pipeline situation when you're waiting for the build to finish, that's going to be probably one of the areas where I suspect developers will see a huge improvement versus on local development. You know what I mean? Like that type of stuff. So. With TSX, that's 120. And with TSC, it's 350. That's 45 times slower than Bun. Now, of course, you're rarely running scripts directly with Node. You'll usually use a command like npm run dev to run your dev script. Yep. With bun, you can replace any npm run command with bun run instead. Bun run. On a MacBook Pro, going on a bun run. About 150 milliseconds to start running a script. In bun, it takes just 30. npm feels noticeably laggy, whereas bun feels instantaneous. Performance remains a key guiding principle for bun's design. But since we're already building a new runtime, we figured we might as well bake some features into Bun to make your life easier as a developer. We've mentioned TypeScript and JSX support already. These work out of the box with Bun. There's no dependencies required. In Bun, both CommonJS remember Deno's like that as well. And ES modules are supported, and they work all the time. Developers have wasted way too much time worrying about incompatibility between CommonJS versus ESM. 
this is super interesting to me. So uh, let me switch sides here. You kind of see it behind those socials going on there, but support for common JS and ESM, right? Like, like they're saying right now we're in this, like, um, the middle, like this, uh, wow, man, I'm, I'm lacking words today that I like, I know the word that I want, but I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the word we're in the midst of like this, uh, uh, limbo. We're in like a limbo right now between ESM and common JS. If you don't know what that means, it's essentially what you see on screen in the use of import versus the use of require essentially. I mean, I'm, that's oversimplification probably, but you get the idea. That's essentially what's from a developer's perspective, what a big difference is. Um, and so some NPM packages are still supporting common JS, which is require and some are strictly only ESM. And then you run into these errors that like, you just, it's like, oh, I can't find this module, can't load this package because it's, it uses ESM and your, yours isn't set up. Your node project isn't set up to support ESM or vice versa, right? So we're in this limbo right now as node transitions into strictly ESM as well. Um, and until that kind of clears up, it's a pain in the butt sometimes dealing with some of these packages that you might rely on in your project. But yet another thing, especially for a new developer to have to overcome and learn, and it makes that learning curve steeper in that regard. So it seems like, again, we'll see if we can maybe toy with this today, if we have time, they're gonna address that natively with Bun. With Bun, they both just work. In fact, you can import and require in the same file. Bun has support for hot reloading using dash dash hot. When hot reloading is enabled, you edit a file and it will reload your code without restarting the process. In this example, Bun is running a WebSocket server. When That's Bun hot so reloads, fast, man. the code is reloaded, but the connection stays alive. This way, your application updates instantaneously without losing state. Bun also has a plugin API that lets you define custom loaders. You can extend the Bun runtime to support things like .yaml imports. It uses an API that is inspired from ESBuild. Which I missed this the first time I ran through this video. I'm not sure I see a use. Oh, let me. It means many ESBuild plugins just work in Bun. Okay. ESBuild. So like if you need compatibility between existing plugins from ESBuild into Bun, kind of like with NPM packages being supported natively by Bun now, they're doing that too. Okay. I don't really, uh, I still need to dabble more with ESBuild directly. Um, to understand that use case in that regard and how it translates to bun here. One bun enthusiast even wrote a plugin that lets you imp one bun enthusiast. We got an ad about to start here. Hold on. An ad is about to start in pause thousand milliseconds. There's an ad running for 90. Um, Frank says he got a nice deep voice. Nevertheless. Yeah. Yeah. They all have great speaking voices. They, they all do a, a great job. Some better than others, but I'm just, I was just calling that out as, you know, it's just something that like, it's kind of like somebody that studied film and they go and watch a movie and they could do nothing but like look at the different techniques and they can't just, they can't see past that and just enjoy the story type of thing. That's what's happened. That's what happens with me with some of this stuff. I do it with my own videos and whatnot. I critique it and cringe. <laughs> I'm not saying I, I'm not saying I'm cringing at this. I'm not uh, like the video is really well done and they all do a great job. Um, my own videos, I definitely cringe at. I don't like hearing myself talk and whatnot. I digress. Uh, Nafron says, I automated some tasks that didn't take much time, but, but were repetitive. I did the math over a week. It was almost an hour saved. Nice. That's good. Yeah. Uh, Liminal says, I just had this issue on my back end, CJS versus MJ. I, yes. A, a lot of us are dealing with that right now. Pranav says, I hate dealing with this. Damn. Yep. And we're back. It looks like 20 seconds for some folks, though, still. Hold on. We'll get back into it. We'll, we'll pick up here in a second. Frank says, oh, trust me, searching your, your words, I feel you. I know, but I'm a native English speaker, Frank. I have that advantage, and I still struggle. <laughs> I hope that gives you a lot of confidence in yourself, you know? This is yet, yet one of the many reasons why I don't give people a hard time that are not native English speakers that come in and they're, they're worried about their English, and I'm like, no, English is tough. <laughs> the fact that you could speak it is, like, fantastic. All right. Picking up where we left off, plugin API with Jared here. Import Rust files in your JavaScript. The imported Rust file gets compiled on the fly and called using Bun's FFI API. 
Fun has baked in APIs for the things you need most as a developer. Now, for example, if you want to read a file, you can just use bun file. Bun file returns a file object. So that in Node, Node does have um, file IO built into it. So you you pull it in. I wonder, I, I would love to see the rest of this code. Like, do they have to say like import bun from bun or something like that above this or not? Like, we'll get into it, right? But like with Node, you say import FS typically is the, the shorthand we use. And most Node developers recognize that. And then you say import FS from node colon FS type of thing, right? Did he say bun has bacon APIs? I would love that. So not too different in that regard, but let's, let's continue. It has the same properties as the file API in browsers. But more importantly, this allows bun to lazily load files only when you need it. Hmm. When you're ready to read the content of a file, the object gives you a handful of useful methods for rendering it in different formats. I like that. That's nice. If you've used browser APIs before, this pattern looks very familiar. Writing files is also really easy. Use the bun write API to write pretty much anything to disk, a string, file, buffer. You can even use an HTTP request. Bun writes three times faster than Node.js and mm. reads files up to 10 times faster. Use bun serve to easily spin up an HTTP server. Bun serve is based Welcome on Welcome in and thanks for joining today, Rugmat. Hey, Rugmat, you missed a lot, but I'm glad you're here. Hope everything's going well by you. If you got a win in the week, drop it in the chat. Nafron says that looks like the Go encoders, the previous stuff that was on here. Yeah, it's like. Oops. You're talking about this? It's pretty nice to have that. I like that. And then when he's talking about like the fact that it's three times faster writes and all that, like again, speed, speed definitely is a nice draw, nice highlight staple type of, uh, functionality built into a new technology to get people to move over, but it's not an end all be all, you know? Yeah. It's how you serialize and deserialize. Yeah. What's interesting here is I think fetch is built into bun as like, I'm curious about that with this, this sample code that they're sharing. Welcome in and thanks for joining today, Roy Lee. Hey, Roy. Clark, yo. Missed you too, Roy. Good to see you. How you been? What's what's your win of the week if you got one to share? No pressure, though. And oop, bun. Yes, we're checking out bun. Have you heard about it, Roy? Are you, you tried it out yet? The new 1.0 release dropped this morning. So, and then another thing to call out here is response. So a lot of this stuff that we're seeing here, again, you can do it natively with Node, but it takes a lot more code in my experience, maybe there's better ways to do it than I've done. Whereas if I pull an express, it's a, it's a little bit simpler. It's more simple and more close to this type of situation um, than the native built-in stuff to Node.js. You know what I'm saying? So this, I'm curious if this response class or type is something that's... Um, Easily... Something that's built into Bun directly. You were in the premiere? Nice, Roy. Spin up an HTTP. Uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on that, so feel free to share them as we go through all this. P server. Bun serve is based on web APIs like request and response. This server can handle four times more requests per second than the equivalent in Node.js. And what about WebSockets? Bun server is highly optimized for message throughput. Bun can handle one million messages per second, which outperforms the equivalent Node.js package by a factor of five. Bun that's wild. That's like crazy faster. Crazy faster. Crazy more fast. More crazy fast. English is my native language and I struggle. <laughs> uh, bun. WebSockets. We use WebSockets a lot in, on this channel, like to interact with OBS, to interact with uh, Twitch chat. So I'm very curious in, in that. That probably like for folks that build out WebSocket based like chat bots and stuff like that for Twitch and big time streamers that have thousands of people concurrent chat messages going on. Bun might be the way to go in that in that type of project, right? In environment. Uh Pranav says this is cool. I'm glad to hear that. Roy, I was disappointed. It was advertised for two days and even more via email. Then it was such a short premiere showing speeds and it looks interesting. Um I wouldn't say I wasn't disappointed. I, I like I think it was understandable. They they definitely 
So here's the thing. If you're them, you definitely want to build up a lot of hype about your 1.0 release. That's a big deal. So I don't blame them for that. And I don't blame them for having an issue on... Because So what, what Roy is talking about... Toykin. Roy Toy. Roy is talking about is initially the 1.0 release was supposed to happen yesterday, but they ran into an issue that delayed that. And their builds take like hours. And there's a certain reason why I forget exactly. They were they were talking through it in a QA session on Twitter spaces or whatever the heck you want to call it. And uh somebody mentioned it's something like they rebuild all of their modules from scratch for security reasons or something like that. So anyway, it takes hours for them to build a new release, essentially. Maybe they should use Bun. <laughs> but um, uh, but uh, that delayed them, and they didn't actually release yesterday as they scheduled it to be or announced it to be. They ended up releasing it this morning. Uh, you said yes. Roy says yes, but I was expecting more of an interesting video. I mean longer. No, nah, I think this is good. They're trying to adhere to the context of this platform on YouTube, and you generally want to keep it between five and ten minutes for a video like this. I can see them releasing more, more videos and tutorials going through the different aspects of it, more in depth of what you want. And I imagine that's probably on their their backlog of things to do. You didn't mind the issue, but I was emailed like a week before the premiere. I got you. And then the premiere was just a bunch of time comparisons. Yeah. No, I I, I can understand that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's their. That's what we were talking about earlier, Roy, That uh, before you joined in. One of their biggest selling points right now is the, the speed, the performance of Bun. And, I, I, and as I was saying before, is like I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the thing that wins over Node.js developers or gets Node.js developers to start new projects with Bun or convert their existing projects to Bun. It may be. It may. But I think... I think some of the other things that they add in there they, to improve the overall developer experience is more important to me than the speed necessarily. All right, I got, I got some lunch. Thank you. So, so yeah, I feel you on that. Like you're, you're expecting a little bit more than just a heavy talk about the speed of it. But that's their main selling point. That was like their main objective with making this, is my understanding. That's the gist I got from it. In which outperforms the equivalent Node.js package by a factor of five. Bun also exposes a publish and subscribe API for WebSockets. This allows you to easily broadcast messages to certain topics with the same performance as if you were doing it in native code. Bun has built-in hashing. It even has support for password hashing using Bcrypt and Argon. I like that. Node.js, although I think that's improving too. Actually, it's changed in the latest versions, if I recall correctly. You used to, I think it was like in 16 or 18 version, 16 or 18 of Node.js, they added it in natively. But you used to have to pull in a Bcrypt package separately in order to do that. So something that Node already has, but it's also nice to see that that uh, similarities, the equivalent is happening in Bun too. And that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Bun's Welcome APIs. Welcome in and thanks Bun for joining today, 404 Not Found. Yes, 404. Absolutely. It was very well done. Placement for Node.js. And it implements around 40 of Node's built-in modules. I feel, I have a feeling, 404, that that's, they, they worked with some video production company and they're like, hey, take a look at an Apple Keynote. That's what we want to do. We want that look and feel, that vibe as part of this video. And so they, I feel like they did really well. I like it a lot. The hand movement in the... Yeah, exactly. At this point, certain rarely used modules like DGRAM and Inspector are not yet implemented. Others like the V8 module expose details of Node.js's internal V8 engine, which does not apply to Bun, which is based on WebKit. Ultimately, we're taking a very pragmatic approach to Node.js compatibility and focusing on the APIs that are actually useful to developers. So if you have an API server implemented with something like Hono, Express, or Koa, it'll just work. So will 99% of full stack applications, including anything built with a major framework like Next.js, Remix, Veek, Astro, and Nuxt. Of course, before you get started with any of those frameworks, you'll need to install dependencies. That's why Bun is not just a runtime. Bun is a Node.js compatible package manager. It's a familiar experience to anyone who's used a package manager before. But trust me, you've never seen a package manager this fast. On our latest benchmark, Bun installs your packages 29 times faster than NPM and 17 times faster than PNPM. 
Bun is careful to avoid unnecessary network calls when resolving <laughs> versions of downloading code. Bun also uses the fastest available system calls on each operating system. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I'm laughing at Roy's comment. They need to blink more, folks, the folks in the video. Listen. <laughs> let's, uh, I don't know what to say. I don't, I guess what I'm getting is let's not be jerks. I think, uh, I think everybody did a great job in this video, honestly. But there are things that do stand out like that. Uh, okay, that will be noticeable. Yes, the speed here, installing dependencies. Yes, absolutely. The fact that it's faster than PMPM is kind of kind of wild too. Four four. Damn, did they hire the same production crew for from Apple? Geez, I know it feels like it for sure. This is huge. The speed here. This is stuff like that's you know I was I was speculating earlier about speed of bun bundling and that kind of, or not bundling whatever i forget what the other aspect was but this installing dependencies in a pipeline is going to speed up people's builds like crazy in fact maybe maybe you have a node application but you use bun just to just to do all this stuff in a pipeline that could be a potential use case right maybe it's hard to get it's hard to do great video yes uh liminal says i'd be terrified to present javascript runtime yes i'm a huge nerd i mean we're all we're all nerds here to some degree right I applaud these people for what they're doing here. It's pretty amazing. Why do we keep getting this junk messages that Automod is picking up? Uh, but I agree, Liminal, yeah. There's got to be... If you're not used to being on camera... So everybody, be conscious of this, okay? Some folks are just... I mean, imagine yourself being put in, this, in the position of being on camera... And you're somebody that's, you know, you just stick to yourself. You're not used to being on camera. You're not used to having to present in front of a group of people. You're going to feel a little uncomfortable. You're going to, you would need coaching too, right? I, I certainly needed a lot of coaching early. And I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying I don't need more coaching at this point even, you know? So just, uh, you know, keep that in mind, but it is, it is kind of funny to see and feel it, right? to copy hundreds of thousands of files in a fast and that's another good point frank says and have a specific text to say not just chit chat right so when you're reading from they're reading from a script obviously they have to that you want it to be as concise and, and clean cut as possible there if you're it's a little bit easier to riff off the top of your head about a topic that you know a lot versus having to read from a script too so keep that in mind and that's a good point thank you for bringing it up frank 404 these are the devs by the way the fact that they got in front of a camera is achievement yes absolutely 100 percent. i commend them a lot for that it's a scalable way keep in mind bun can be used as a package manager entirely independent of the bun runtime functionally it behaves identically to npm yarn and pnpm it's just faster it reads your package json downloads packages from a registry and installs them into your node modules folder where they can be discovered later by bun or He mentioned downloads packages from a registry. What registry? I wonder if they're going to have their own registry too. Kind of like Deno has their own registry. Or Node.js. Bun also supports all the features you'd expect from your package manager. Things like workspaces, custom registries, Git dependencies, local package linking, the works. Though when you're waiting for your CI, most of the time isn't spent installing dependencies. It's spent running your tests. That's why Bun is also an incredibly fast test run. Bun provides a familiar Jest compatible API. Import the usual functions like test, expect, and mock from the Bun test module. You get all the- We could skip this part. We don't, we don't need tests, right? The benefits of the Bun runtime out of the gate, like TypeScript and JSX, top level await, ESM support. No need for a plugin like TS Jest. It just works. We benchmark Jest, Vitest, and Bun against the test suite for the schema validation library Zot. Bun was eight times faster than the runner-up Vitest and 13 times faster than Jest, even when it was using SWC for transpiling. Well, Bun's expect matchers are implemented in highly optimized native code, where in Jest, it has to be compared in JavaScript. This means that Bun's implementation of expect.toEqual is 100 times faster than Jest. Bun is ready to use today. To install it in GitHub Actions, use the official setup bun action. If you're looking to deploy an application... <laughs> bun action? <laughs> come on, nobody else heard that? Let's go, oh, come on.
is 100 times faster than Jest. Bun is ready to use today. To install it in GitHub Actions, use the official setup bun action. If you're <laughs> I know, I'm a child, okay? Listen, I talk about farts here, okay? How can I talk about bun action? That's a fart. Exactly, liminal bun. That's my bun action right there. <laughs> yes. Bun action, baby. That's what I'm going to start calling farts from now on. Bun actions. If you're looking to deploy an application, check out the official Docker image. And to install it on your local machine with a single command, head to bun.sh for instructions. Thanks for joining us to celebrate this major milestone. It's been incredible to see Bun as a community grow over the past two years. Look at the excitement on his face, man. That's awesome to see. So thank you to everyone Super happy for them. and Twitter who've been following along and to our over 300 contributors. But this is just the beginning. Damn, 300. That's a lot. We're working on a new way to deploy JavaScript and TypeScript to production. And we're hiring low-level system engineers if you want to help us build the future of JavaScript. You can also join us on our Discord server. You'll get a sneak peek at what we're working on next. And it's a great way to get quick feedback or support for your projects. So that's it. Bun 1.0 is here, and we're just getting started. <laughs> He's like, get me out of here. <laughs> I'm done with this video. So yeah, they did a live Twitter space. Look, these are all the contributors. Big, big props. They accomplished a lot. It's cool. Something, so some other things to note, uh, Jay Walter, actually. All right, so that's the video. That was their announcement. Bum 1.0 is here video on the Bun YouTube channel. Check them out. Great stuff. I'm sure they're gonna have more videos, probably going to what like uh, Roy was talking about, where it explains Bun more in depth and the different features that it has. This is just like the highlight announcement, right? 1.0 is here. It's ready for production. Start using it type of thing, everybody. Um, Jay Walter asked, do you know the Swedish word for speed? No, what is it? Who funds this? That was going to be my next thing, actually. Liminal. We're on this. Great minds think alike. We're on the same page. So that's one of the key differences between one of the differences, not a key difference necessarily, but a difference be behind how these projects are funded or run and that type of thing, right? Node.js is community run. It's uh, the OpenJS Foundation, if I recall correctly. That's what it's named to now is the body, the governing body behind Node.js and help. It's, it's community based. Okay. Deno and Bun are venture capitalists funded and backed. So that's something to keep in mind with this type of stuff. I don't I don't think that's necessarily bad or good. I, I, I really don't have a strong opinion or thought or anything to speculate regarding that other than that's just a difference, right? So there's one that's like strictly run and governed by the community. And then there's these other two that are have for-profit companies behind them. So... That the only thing with that that I would say that in my opinion that I have about it is I'm cautious about that, right? Like that could while things look great now and are running the way they are and 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 they're being very community centric in in both Deno and Bun, like 300 contributors, right? For Bun there that he just mentioned, that could very quickly change at the drop of a hat at some point in time. Will it? I don't think so at this point in time, but potentially, yeah. Like these people that invested in in the folks behind bun and invested in deno they're gonna probably want to find a way to make money where i think that might happen and i think it's already happened with like deno let's take a look at deno the way deno like what deno sells is their deno deploy aspect so hosting deno projects and that type of thing being a cloud provider for deno based projects is where i think that's their monetization strategy their business model I believe. I think that's where it's heading. And I imagine Bun is going to do something similar. So just a, just a heads up on that, okay? That's something to take into consideration when you're evaluating this stuff. Roy says, I, I can't wait to be honest. My coworkers are a bit annoyed by it, but it seems like they are new thing. They are like new things are bad. I, I I definitely understand that. There's some people, let's talk about that a little bit too. We've talked about that on the stream before. Um, when it comes to just programming languages and new programming languages and things like that. So really quick, that mentality that Roy's bringing up about their coworkers, that's very like anti new stuff. I think 
I believe, I suspect, I'm not saying this is a case for everybody and, and to generalize things, but at, at least in my experience, when I've run into that, I think when what when it boils down to is an insecurity in that developer, in, in that individual of not wanting to have to face change and grow themselves and have, they don't have that learn and growth mindset type of thing. And that's where I think that stems from when people have that initial like, no, new thing, bad, right? However, I'm not naive to the fact that like, especially in the JavaScript ecosystem, there's Welcome. a new- Thanks for joining today, Hellraise. There's a new sparkly, shiny JavaScript thingy happening almost like every week it feels like at times, right? And it gets exhausting and overwhelming for developers that work within this ecosystem. So there is some balance to that, right? Like I can understand people being resistant, especially in the JavaScript ecosystem to new things because of how quickly things rotate and churn and iterate uh, in, in that ecosystem. So I'm not naive to that happening, but generally speaking, and in my experience, I feel most people are resistant to new stuff because of their insecurities and not having a growth mindset. Okay, that's the short of it. So in this case, yeah, I think people should be cautiously hesitant and up, you know, like cautious about uh, bun and jumping into it. I wouldn't necessarily go and put it in production right away right now at like a big enterprise company, but you know, I think you'd be okay if you did though, based on it being a 1.0 release right now. So that's my two cents on that. And thank you for bringing up that, that comment, Roy. Uh, Luminal says open source versus open source. Yeah. Hellraiser, good to see you, buddy. Welcome in. So Deno is just node with better deployment structure. Um, I don't know that. I, I mean, I, I think you have a point there and you, you know, it's kind of the idea, I guess, but the point I was making there about them having their own hosting is what we were talking about prior to that, that maybe you might've missed before you joined, um, in that. Node.js is backed by, it's like community-based and it's backed by a foundation, the OpenJS foundation. Whereas Deno and Bun, which is the newest runtime that just came out, they're backed by venture capitalist funding and that type of thing. So they're a for-profit situation, whereas it's like a non-profit situation behind Node. You get what I'm saying? So the idea behind that is to just, be, you know, keep that in mind when making the decision of what runtime you want. But I think because, and the reason why I say keep that in mind is because maybe while things are all open source right now with these two, Deno and Bun, they could potentially, you know, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just throwing ideas out there. They Welcome could potentially go closed source. For joining today, lacerated underscore digits. They could go closed source, right? They could, uh, I don't know, find other, they're, they're going to want to find ways to monetize that. And that will lead to some changes from what the state of things today for both of those, Deno and Bun. But what I'm saying is Deno, I think it looks like from what I can tell, the way they're approaching monetization and making money and making a business out of Deno is keeping the Deno runtime itself all open source and community based. And then if you want to simple, if companies want to simplify running, hosting and having, you know, richer tooling around Deno, they offer stuff around that pricing as we can see in this in here. You see what I'm saying? So they'll offer like native hosting for Deno out of the box versus like going and having to do all that yourself in another cloud provider potentially, right? That's that's what I think might be. That's what I suspect might be the future of Bun as well. So last rate did just good to see you. Welcome in. Says, wow, I switched teams and went back to a full-time dev role. Nice. I'm drowning in C++ stuff I haven't done since 2008. Ah, I feel for you. I can't, I mean, I did C++ like in school a little bit and that was it. And it, yeah. But good to see you. And I wish you the best of luck with that. Uh, Liminal says, here's some higher octane fuel for your car. No, no, thanks. I'm good. <laughs> oh, and that, in the sense of the folks, that's in response to the folks that are like resistant to change and that. Yeah. 404 says, Deno profitable with this model. I, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know if they released that type of information either, but I personally don't pay that close attention to it to know, you know, I'm not like deep into startup and venture capital space. Like I, I don't have a strong interest in that for one. And, uh, and so like, I don't have a, a lot of knowledge in that area to know and be um, privy to that type of information or how to get to that information. I'm sure there's websites that probably do. Maybe you all know, but yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I can't even begin to speculate on that. 
All right, so uh, let's pause it there for a second. I'm going to take a quick uh, break, finish up my lunch here for a second. And then when we come, when I come back from the break, we'll jump into trying out Deno, like installing it, running it like a hello world thing, and then trying to convert like an existing Node.js project over to not Deno, but uh, Bun. Okay. So I'm going to run some ads just to give us some break from having to get repetitive ads over and over again from Twitch while we're on the BRB screen. Okay, folks. All right. I'll see you in like three minutes, three minutes. Hang tight. An ad is about to start in 5,000 milliseconds. There's an ad running for 180. Welcome in and thanks for joining today SC underscore May underscore I. Rugmat says Rugmat 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 timing I have the potty break blew my nose check on wifey and came back just in time for the ads to finish okay so um one thing I want to leave you all with too or not leave you all with but share with you in you know after ending watching the release video is we have at sneak and I, I could contributed to this a lot of the stuff that I discussed in terms of the comparison between Node, Bun, and, and Deno, uh, we wrote up in a blog post. So if you want to go into a little bit more in depth, see some of the benchmarking stuff that uh, the folks at 
bun shared and kind of compare things the community around it that type of stuff all these things that you would use to evaluate bun and make a decision for a project we did a little bit of a write-up to try and help with that a little bit it's not necessarily perfect i contributed to it so check it out it's at that link in the chat and then i will uh, bring it up in here too so you can kind of see very i'm not going to go through line by line we kind of did as we were watching the video um but it goes through each one she talks about some of the history behind it the performance metrics that fun shares and how they come to get those benchmarks that type of thing uh some of the things nodes doing uh like this individual here who works on the node team uh, is very heavily focused on improving different the performance and speeds of different modules within node to speed up node overall too and and that kind of thing right and then we talk about while these are this is from the uh 2022 state of javascript survey um imagine the 2023 one will show a little bit differently but it, it just tells the same story that you you know kind of already know but like validates it with some numbers right measurable numbers of like how many of the respondents use node deno and bun that type of thing keep in mind this was 2022 so there is that going on and then the security aspect of it we gotta gotta talk about that so give it a read if you'd like check it out let me know what you think if you have feedback too here's the link it again bun evaluation fart yes yes liminal all right oh i'm not even showing my screen knucklehead me this is what i was going through start top to bottom type of thing so you can check it out that's the other thing that comes that's interesting about node is they have fresh which is a web framework for deno which is kind of interesting it's one that they built versus like the community building like express or fastify and then there's loom which is a static site generator whereas in the node side of things you have other tools that build out static site generators like the more newer one astro right i love astro by the way <clears throat> okay so let's uh let's go to bun's website and see how we get started i don't know i don't think i have installed it on this machine yet so or did I? I think I did. I did I at least install it. So I went and copied this. I use Windows Subsystem for Linux. And then I can do bun help. Okay. Did that setting not change there? Screencast. Talked about this earlier. Let's left it off. Uh, so you can see I have bun. That was weird. I have buns, hun. I have bun installed already. All I did was use that same same curl command. I'm in the way. You can't see me. See? That curl command right there that they shared in the, on the website, right? So now that I have that set up, let's see what they say we should do next. So let's go into... What do you think, chat? You want to help direct me? Where would you go from here? Would you go to docs, guides, blog? I mean, you could read more about it. Works with node modules. I'm very, we're going to check that out by using an existing project. But right now I want to start with like a brand new one. Speaking of, let's actually set that up. So we'll uh, CD. Uh, CD again. I think I have a temp folder. CD temp. Make their maker bun fun hun cd bun fun hun and then we're gonna say code uh insiders dot that and then reload it into this oh hmm do i trust myself so something that i noticed about bun if you look at the help of it so let's like not even read the documentation let's see how user friendly it is without reading documentation there's config files you can preload reload main files version you can define substitute key value while parsing i don't know what any of this means exclude module from transpilation a loader rewrite import urls to start with origin all this stuff seems like way over my head. 
of what I'm used to needing or doing here. There's the hot reload, right? Enable auto reload on buns JavaScript runtime. Hot dash dash hot. Hot cross buns. They need a cross in there. If they have a cross command, that would really complete the whole branding. <laughs> All right. So we have bun run, bun test X, which is the, it's kind of like the equivalent of NPX. Think of it that way. Bun X. Which kind of like installs and runs and execute uh, like a, a a package, a dependency. Tests REPL. You can do a REPL just like you do Node. Uh, init. So we can start an empty bun project from a blank template or create a new project from a template. So what do you think? Let's try. Let's make a new directory in here. Uh, make their uh, init test and then cd init test and then we'll say bun init let me clear my screen so you can see bun init bun init helps you get started with a minimal project and tries to guess sensible defaults good package name yeah entry point index.ts and that's it done the package json file was saved in the current directory so if we look over here, that's what it gives you. What's bun lock B? Oh, that's about. There's index console log bun package JSON dev dependency bun types latest and then peer dependencies TypeScript. Okay. Uh, Royce is glad I got you to save me the trouble of random testing because sometimes I feel stupid when so yeah, yeah, no worries. I got you we'll do this together. So now I think we just want to do bun run. No scripts in package JSON. Okay. Bun help again. Control J. Run. All right. So run runs a JavaScript with bun, a package JSON script, or bin. Or a bin. What is that? A bin? Like something in a bin folder? Install and execute that. Init, create, install, add, remove, update, link, uplink. More commands for managing packages. Build. I guess I need to run build, or can I run it in line? Uh, you think bun lock B is like yarn lock or package lock? Yeah, it could be. Uh, Roy says, that was my issue when I tried to make a VS Code example. I did everything, but it wouldn't load. It was because of some PowerShell. I felt stupid till I saw the solution, which no way could have known that. Yeah, I've definitely been there before for stuff like that. Um, We might need to go to the docs at this point. What if I just do bun? Bun test. No test found. Okay. Bun. Bun. Well, let's, ch let's check out the readme, I guess. What did it put in the readme? Maybe that'll tell me. Bun run index. Okay, so you point it to a file that you want to run. All right, I thought it... I thought it required, based on what this describes here, run JavaScript with bun. Uh, I, mean, I guess I, I skimmed over that too fast. And then a package. I was thinking it had to have a package JSON script, in which case I didn't want to do that just yet. All right, so if I just do bun run, bun run index.ts, hello via bun. We did it. Okay, well, let me do that again. Bun run index.ts, hello via bun. So that's cool. We just did our first bun application. Hello world. All right, but that's just the init one. So what's let's go back and we'll make a make der create test, right? And so there's a bun create function. Thank you, Nafron. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So if I run bun create, create a new project from a template. Uh, oh, okay. So if given a GitHub repository name, bun will download it and use it as a template. Otherwise, it will run bun x create hyphen template with the given arguments. Uh, learn more about creating new projects. And all right, so this we're going to have to go to the docs. Yes, we can open that. Bun create. Is there like a like a template marketplace? Bun create template. Oh, so you can use some of the like templates that are out on node already, huh? Is that what this is about? 
from npm. Assuming you don't have a local template with the same name, this command will download and execute the create template package from npm. The following two commands will behave. Create remix from, oh, from a GitHub repository. You can do that. I'm from the following steps, download the template, copy all the files, install dependencies, initialize a fresh Git repo, opt out with the no Git and run the templates configured start script if defined. Oh, it goes a little fast there. I wouldn't, I don't think I would want it to do that right away from a local template. I had a local, I don't have a local template set up logic reference. All right. So Chad, do you know of a template we can use maybe if not i can i have some on my github i can probably get uh all right i want to go to my repositories I think I have a template, don't I? Secure node server. This is one of the ones that I was thinking uh, I want to drop in and replace, but maybe we just use it as a template. All right, so going back to their docs. Where does that come from, though? Like, is it hosted up on NPM? So if I search for create remix, is that how it works? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So what I would need to do for like this, I would need to be like create secure node server as a package on NPM for it to just be able to do bun create. But in this case, what I'm going to need to do is then actually use the repo approach. Okay. So we shall do that. So we're going to say bun create, uh, cd into create test I'll say bun create actually i don't know oh i wonder this is one of those things whenever i use these tools like this they either build the template out in the current folder or they build it as a child folder the template you know what i mean so that's i'm wondering if i should actually go back up to here and run bun create and from that last three digits you're an expert now Time to start looking for bun contracts. Yeah. Oh, oh my, that was fast. Okay, so it did, it created a folder based on the name of the template. So now we're gonna CD into secure node server. All right, now here's the moment of truth. Can it just run it? It says bun dev, no dev found. Didn't it? Didn't it tell me to do that? I thought that CLI told me to do that, didn't it? After it made the template. <clears throat> Since that was so fast, let's try it again, actually. So we're going to CD back. Uh, we're going to RMRF uh, secure node server. Cool. All right. And then we're going to do bun, bun create that again. See, this is to, to get started, run CD secure node server bun dev. So it's making an assumption that there's a dev script, but there isn't. So it's just something to note there. Because uh, if I do, well, let me show it again. Bun dev. Yeah, no dev. So I wonder if I just do, since I have an index, what do I have? Bun server. So if I do bun run source in our server JS, will that work? That is fast, right? 404? No such file directory. That's not Bun's fault. That's my project's fault. So npm run or Bun. All right. So I need a Bun run create cert. I don't remember what that shows. So I'm just going to be careful on that and not show it on screen. Bun run. All right. It didn't show anything. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. So what that ended up doing is it created a cert cert.pem file and a key.pem file so for https for a node server 
so the what's the repo for it's just my uh, a template kind of repo that i made i'll share the link in chat with you all a long time ago and i've been iterating on it but uh it's called secure node server so basically it's not perfect but it attempts to give you like a, a reference project or template that you could use in this case um to to as a jump start for building a secure node server using express and common common best practices for security best practices for node finite new win of the week my blur plugin was just approved by the obs people and is on their plugin list congrats that's awesome man Roy says, mm, you're already exposing how they shorten the time. Node checks every file. Bun just downloads them. Joking, joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats on that, Fina. That's awesome, man. Very, very happy for you. Hold on, just checking work stuff real quick. Okay. So it created that. So now I should be able to say bun run that. I don't know if you can see this behind me here. Your application is available on is running on port 3000. Open in browser. Do I need to go to HTTPS error empty response? Advanced proceed anyway. There we go. That was, that was fast. That was so fast, man. I literally, like, I don't need Node in this project. Secure Node server, secure JavaScript server. Yeah, so the way HTTPS on localhost is, and you could see the browser's like, hey, this, the certificate for this is this made up certificate, self-signed certificate, essentially, which is what that script makes that I have as part of that template project. So I, I don't want to get deep into the weeds, but I created a, that that repo that i'm using is the template to create a project or bun bun create right we so it's just something that i want to something quick to use that i've created in the past <clears throat> and so what this does is it creates a self-signed certificate using well in this case it used bun and javascript to do it and using what's well, wild so you know what's crazy chat that all worked without me having to change any this is all written this was written for node.js okay I need you to understand what happened here, okay? All of this project, the secure node server, this repo, right here is my repo, secure node server, link in the chat if you'd like, okay? Yes, the po the project is public. Right here, public, secure node server. It was written like years ago, last year, three months ago was the last time I updated it. It was just because I was upgrading express version, basically. That's it from one to 14.18.1 1 to 14.18.2, okay? It's built for Node. It's built for Node. I kind of want to test, what if we do npm create, use this repo, because I'm pretty sure npm has that, npm create. The, yes, 404. The backwards. I'm so surprised at the backwards compatibility and how smooth that was. I was expecting to have to change my code to support bun. I didn't have to change any code. That's the point I'm getting at right there. All of that code was written for Node.js. This is a built-in Node.js utility library. This is a built-in, or is it? I don't know. Actually, some of it. Package JSON. Here's my dependencies: Cookie Parser. That's on npm. C Surf is on npm. Express is on npm. Debug Helmet and Morgan all on npm. Dev dependencies npm too. Okay, so that clarifies that a little bit. So util fs built in native modules for Node.js, but the equivalent was made obviously for Bun because otherwise me running the script wouldn't have worked. Okay. Then the pem, which is a public package up on the npm registry, was installed and used by Bun. Where does Bun install this in Node modules? It must. That's crazy how fast it did the npm install too, man. I didn't even have to run npm install or bun install. It just did it. That was so fast. That is like, again, I think you all heard me. I was kind of skeptical of like, yeah, this is great that they have all these benchmarks that say they're fast, but I'm like, how is it going to feel as a developer? That feels really good. Snappy. So damn snappy. Slap happy snappy. 
snap happy bo jappy crappy slappy oh man and then the rest of this code like the server this is debug that's a package https that's native to, that's a, a public package on the registry uh https native to node that's that's wild man that was way faster than i was expecting i thought it was going to be way more of a pain in the butt too yeah bun removed very few built-in libraries that they found no one used it's pretty neat yeah finite says do you have a black hole on your hard drive now or does it get rid of node modules as well <laughs> where's a full-size app and try it i don't know do we have an example of a full-size app and what do you what like how do you describe a full-size app for you 404 essentially all we need is if you can point me to a template repo or a project i can tell bun to create that base create a project based on that template maybe like create react app but i'm pretty sure npm has a create Does create react at M mpx create react at my app i thought npm has a create like functionality doesn't it I can run it. Well, let's see. We can test it out. It might be in a newer version of Node that we meet. Uh, let's let's stop this from running. Uh, npm create dash dash help. This will tell us if it's in there. Oh, there. Mm. Create a package JSON file. No. Oh, that's the equivalent of init. npm dash dash help. install test run run the script named display usage info for all commands help npm all right so let's clear that npm help npm okay all right we're gonna quit this we're just gonna do npm's docs again Is it npm init that does it? Okay, so npm init and then package is the same as npx package name. So I can say init foo, npm execute create foo. Can I do a GitHub repo? MP so here we go. We have an example. Like create react app. You could just say npm init react app. In, in that directory uh is there <clears throat> workspaces support that's cool can i use a github url to do this like we did with bun what if i point it to a repo i guess we could try that npm init and point it to a repo let's try this quick so you saw how fast that was right so let's look back up um Make their npm example, cd npm example, and then we're going to say npm init, and actually, let me get the repo link again. I don't think that's on my... All right, so npm init. I didn't know you could do this with npm if it does work. No. Remove host identification. Unknown git error. So should I just say Clark should I just say Clarkio slash node server? Let's try that. What if I do it like this? Does that go out to git for that? It is possible that someone is doing something nasty. Someone could be eavesdropping on you right now, man in the middle tag. No. Oh, it thinks like it's attempting to go get that and it thinks it's some something malicious, I guess. An unknown git error. 
I don't know. Uh, npm init from git repo. is legacy what's the latest anything change here maybe we can like search for all the create stuff anything that's prefixed like that create star <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> create hashes It's not like Google, like it has to require create as a prefix in there. Like, what, how do you query this better? Create view, an easy way to start a view project. Create a Node.js app for building production ready RESTful APIs by running one command. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this once with bun and then we're going to do this with NPM. That way it's the same thing. I don't know what's going on with me trying to use my own project to do that. So you can say npm init that. I wonder if I do npx. Let me try one more time. NP instead of uh, npm init, it's npx clarkio slash secure node server. All right, so we'll just do this. All right, let's take note. All right, this is the experience in NPM, creating a quick node API, okay? NPM init create node API app, okay? I literally copied what they said to do, didn't I? <laughs> what is it complaining about? is not in the registry why is it create create npm init remove the create let's just do it like that that should work uh need to install the following packages okay sure so i have to install something in order to create initialize this template i'm in the way you can see it there now though and there was an error Oh. What? Dependencies installed. That was pretty fast. Done in 0 0.03 seconds after it installed. So it doesn't count that time for some reason. Also, why did it do yarn? I literally said npm init and then used yarn? That's a little odd. Uh, so let's see if it's in there though. Yeah, there's a my app in there now. So if we go into my example. There it is. Where's the rest of the code? All right, so I won't, I won't take this as a knock on it. This is to me isn't a knock on NPM one. It's like user error. Me not understanding how this template works. Maybe I can find a better template. Create express. Maybe I 
how about this express generator safe or boilerplate maybe oh by the way i forgot to share this um actually i don't know if i can hold on a second chat All right, so Sneak has uh, an extension to help you know about, like, give you a health score of all packages when you're on an NPM page and stuff like that. I'm going to drop the link in chat here. It's pretty awesome. Let me show you. I'm going to edit now for this browser profile. <clears throat> and then let's pin it. Oop. And that way, when I come in here, if I refresh the page be able to click on this and it tells me oh i don't have my api key all right i'm not going to do that right now instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to sneak advisor because that's what it's using behind the scenes and look it up there all right so it has a decent health score for this create express boilerplate no known security issues popularity is limited understandably maintenance is healthy and community is sustainable okay so i feel Pretty confident in using this as like a good example to try and run with so we are gonna clear that we're gonna see uh rmrf my app and we're gonna say npm init this okay make sure we get rid of the create part oops what did i press and then do i need to give it a name I don't think I do. All right. So again, with NPM, it's like, hey, you need to install this package probably globally in my NPM global area. All right. And then this, so this template's a little bit better because it's like, hey, what's the name? Uh, testing one, two, three. Enable database support? No. Installing awesome framework, framework X. Whatever that means. Again, this is not a knock on NPM. I think this is the template that's doing this. But we, sh we can see maybe Bun will execute what the template's doing a little bit faster. We'll find out. All right, so now we can CD testing one, two, three, and NPM start. Well, that worked right away. Okay, so that's pretty good. That wasn't too bad, but think about the time that that all took, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to stop that from running. We're going to CD back, CD back again. Now we're going to say Bun create that same thing. I wonder if I need to get rid of the create. I forget. Did Bun say that you needed to do that? Bun create. Yeah, just give it the full. Or oh, if you do Bun X. So I might be able to just say Bun create and then remove it. Let's try it that way first. And let's see how fast this goes. Okay, ready chat? It didn't ask me to install first. Now it's up to the prompt and I'll say testing one, two, three as well. No database. And then the, this again, this is the template, but you see how fast we got to that now. It's not like a huge speed difference there, but a, a, no, a noticeable one, I think. At least I feel. I wonder what is installing behind the scenes there. All right, so now I go CD testing, one, two, three, NPM start. And there we go. It's good again. It's running again. Cool. All right, what else do we want to test here?
So what if I maybe do I have another? I can take like my my TTV chatbot project, which is very clunky and heavy in sense of like dependencies and all that fun stuff. I can clone it and then just try to run everything with bun, like do bun install and all that fun stuff and see how fast it goes. So let's go back here. CD back. Um, Git clone this. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to CD into that. And I'm going to say bun install. It's kind of cool little animation it does. And it's, it's done. Oh, sneak. Executable doesn't exist trying to download. Okay. That was sneak's dependency there. All right. So that's done. 9.42 seconds. All right, I'm going to open up another terminal here. We're in bun fun. Let's see the into NPM example. We're going to get clone the same thing again. Then we're going to CD into TTV chatbot. Now we're going to run NPM install. See if it feels significantly faster or not. It feels like it's getting hung up and stuck. <laughs> I don't know about this. Honestly, bun doing that probably it should be faster for NPM because um, well, it doesn't tell me how long that took. I said 35 seconds or 34 seconds right here. According to that one, oh, you can't really see. Can you right here? It says 34 seconds based on my terminal prompt. Um, I feel like that should have gone actually faster and gave gave NPM a bit of an advantage because if I recall correctly and understand correctly how NPM works, it will read from a cache locally on this machine. So if I've already downloaded a package from NPM on this machine, it gets cached so that like if I go to another project that needs to use that package, it'll go to the cache first versus going all the way out to the registry over the network, downloading that tar ball or whatever and trying to install it, you know? So when I did it first with bun in that separate directory, I would have thought, and maybe it's wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe bun, it doesn't behave the same way as a result. But as you can see, nine seconds versus 34 seconds. And that, you know, if you have to do that a lot, especially in a build pipeline that that adds up nine seconds versus 34 seconds. I could see that being sig significant improvement. All right. What else do we want to try? Chat, do you have any questions about bun or things that you're that are popping into your mind as you're thinking of this that you want to see or have have me try out so that you don't have to right now that last one i don't know if you read that what oh something i didn't understand however yes the default dependencies exist but what happens if you try to use something like twitch tmi js Oh, so like, well, so here's, yeah, that's a good question. Let's try running it. So I know like my TTV chatbot one, uh, in this example, this is the bun one. I am using TMI. So if we look at the package JSON in this one, uh, my dependencies, TMI. So bun installed it. I don't have environment variables set up for this just yet. So it may not work. Where are my environment variables that I need? Let me just copy this as is. Rename it to .env. And see if it... 
it'll connect all right without a client ID and token. It should, I think, but we'll see. All right, so now I should be able to say, well, one, let me see my NPM scripts that I have here. I might not be in the right folder, actually. PWD. Bun, this is the NPM example. Let's go back to the bun one. All right, so now I'm in the, the bun version of the TTV chat. I mean, if even if it shows the TMIJS error, it would mean that it worked to... Yes, that's true. What is with these promotional BS bots that keep trying to come in here? As in actually using alert. Yeah, okay. Let's see. All right, so now I should be able to run any any NPM script with bun run. So if I do NPM... Normally, I would do NPM run dev which then do, you can see what it does. It does Nodemon and all that fun stuff, right? Which I don't think I actually need anymore. I can essentially, maybe, let's try this really quick before running a bun script. Let's say bun run source server and index TS, I think it is. So normally, as you can see from my package JSON file, I have Nodemon in here as a dev dependency. Nodemon and TS Node to help me transpile this TypeScript code because this is written in TypeScript. So if we look at server and we look at like uh, index.ts, all TypeScript, okay? My uh, script, my dev script says Nodemon. Uh, we want to use exclude TypeScript or, or focus on, I forget what these arguments are, but it's like, hey, we're using TypeScript JSON. Then we're going to pass in this, uh, execute this following command, pass in TS node, tell TS node the project where to go. It's using TS config fold JSON, and then it's going to run the server index.ts. You know what I'm saying? That's everything I need to do to run it in dev using TypeScript in a Node.js project. I'm curious if this will work by just running bun run index.ts if it'll work similarly. I'm hitting enter now. Okay. Something happened. Uh fetch URL is invalid. So it's it's executing the code. It transpiled and and ran. <laughs> I'm I'm willing to bet we're gonna get the same error if I run it like normally with npm. So if I say npm run dev, let's we'll see what happens. Okay, took a little bit longer. Nodemon is still running and waiting for us to change because the app app crashed. We're seeing all this TypeScript linting issues or something. Unable to compile TypeScript. So it wasn't even able to compile TypeScript. I wonder then. Hmm. That element implicitly has any. So it's, what if I do like a force maybe or something? Oh, I, I, I'm in uh, WSL, so I might need to change that up too. Uh, NPM run dev WSL. Maybe that'll help. No, I'm still getting the TypeScript errors. Uh, Cyan God, good to see you, by the way. What are you building on Bun, Clark? I'm not building anything. I'm just giving Bun a run. <laughs> I'm running with Bun. Uh, I'm trying it out. I'm trying to take it and, and drop it in place for existing Node.js projects to see what's going, like how it behaves. And so far, I'm quite impressed. It's pretty seamless. Some of this stuff that the errors I'm running into are specific to my project configuration, basically, uh, and not so much about Bun. What am I liking about it? I'm, I'm liking how like they keep touting speed as like their main attraction. And so far it, while yes, it's measurably faster. It also feels faster. Cause there's, you know, a lot of times things will claim to be fast. 
uh, and uh you know maybe they have the data to back that up but like as an end user of that thing that technology or whatever it doesn't feel fast especially for a developer tool this does so that's one i'm impressed with that and the other piece i'm impressed with is how it really is so far literally drop in and replace node.js projects that's kind of wild to me i'm super impressed by that so far like now i'm onto like a more complex project that has like some setup that needs to be done here um i wonder if maybe i should try another one because this one i want one that maybe is complex but doesn't have all these environment variables and stuff you know what's another project i have might be a good candidate maybe maybe a vs code extension maybe the maybe we could see if it run it can run a vs code extension i don't know because i don't really run a vs code extension from bun or from the command line in general i run i run it from the debugger in vs code i don't know if that's a good example what are some of my other more recent projects? Um, we could try my uh, my website, which uses Astro. We can give that a shot. Static site generated project. All right, so we're going to CD back again. Uh, I'm going to say uh, git clone that, but it's going to be Clarkio github.io right and the whole git importing thing looks nice yeah all right so i have it there now i'll run uh bun install all right i got a cd into that cd into clarkio so this is going to be for my website running it locally uh bun install <clears throat> 420 packages installed in six and a half seconds okay i want to try this in the npm example so uh cd npm example Git clone that there. I'm taking the same exact project and I'm always doing it after bun does it so that there's no chance of like, oh, there's caching that's happening. If I do it with NPM first and NPM caches the dependencies and that type of stuff on my local machine. And so bun has that advantage. I'm, I'm letting bun go first. And then I'm going to let do NPM afterwards. So we'll see. It should give NPM a, an advantage. So CD into Clark Yo. Now I'm going to run uh, npm install. See how how that goes. Remember, bun was six and a half seconds. Okay, it went faster. npm was faster on this one. So there you go. Plus one for npm on that regard. A little saxophone action going on in the music there. All right, so now back into the bun version of this. I'm going to say, uh, what's my scripts that I have in this one? Oops. Do that again. We have uh, start dev build all right so we'll do uh bun start bun start does that work yep bam so that seems to be working and then let's see if it has my yep there's my website go to the blog go to about go to uses i don't know why it's flashing like that all right so that worked great go back here and we'll stop it now I'll go back to this is the one that's the npm example, hence the folder directory npm dash example. We'll say npm uh, start. And that works as expected too. Yep. Yep, everything's working good there. So not too noticeable of a difference other than npm install was a little bit faster but i bet if i did npm install and then bun you know there'd be bun would have been faster than that one but maybe i might be wrong i don't know that was pretty good though very good 
Uh, Roy says, though, I don't think points where you're running something like that is actually a good example because you're not running with Node anymore. You use Node to run Astro and then Astro does the rest. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah. So it's not necessarily a good example. I'm just keep, I keep trying to find other projects to potentially run. Maybe this Shakira project. This was a game I made for streaming. A live streaming game where the streamer and viewers in chat compete typing challenges. Is there a lot of setup for this one? Fill in the fields, switch client ID, secret and channel ID. Getting started with Docker and then playing the game. You just click start. All right, let's see if we can try this. This is running with node. This is a project that we can try and run with node and with bun. Uh, PWP on this. This is the bun fund. So we're going to CD back, git clone there. And then uh, we'll call it, we'll keep, we'll rename this to NPM testing. And then this one is going to be renamed to bun testing. So I know each terminal is in that context, you know? So that's bun testing. If I CD, CD back one more. Clear. Get clone Shakira in here as well. Clear CD Shakira. CD Shakira. Clear bun install. 1.54 seconds. NPM install in the NPM example. That was pretty fast too both fast so that's good so now it comes to running it i think though i'm gonna need to go grab my like a twitch client id what does it say it's all read me Uh, channel is going to be Clarkio. I wonder if this will work without a client ID or not. All right, so we're going to try running it from bun so far. So bun run. There's run start and run test. All right, so clear bun start. Uh, what's the problem? Error bad requests. Request failed with status code 400. Maybe I do need a... Let's do the same thing in the NPM example. <clears throat> okay. Uh, NPM start. Yeah, same thing. Okay, so I, I must need to go... Let's go get a client ID in secret. <clears throat> I'm going to do that. Put my screen hidden for now. Bun start runs node. I think you'd want bun source. Really? Is that the case? All right, I can try that. Excuse me. All right, I'm creating a new Twitch app, essentially. These captures are a pain in the butt, man. I'm clicking on everything that needs to be clicked on, and it's still like, you're not a human. Bicycles. I've gone through like five of them now. Five cap. Okay, finally, I got it. approved as not being a robot. All right, there's a client's ID. Here. There. And then let's get a secret. Secret. 
secret. I'm putting in the client ID and secret into the environment variable or the environment files, env files. So that should help with that. <clears throat> I mean, it will still have the same issues probably, but to test them against one another. Okay, I didn't really. I, is that how you're supposed to do it? I thought you can just run an npm script and bun will exec be the executable that actually runs the script. Maybe I misunderstood. Uh, let's share my screen again. All right, so now I'm in NPM. So if I say NPM start, now that I have those environment variables, let's see if it gets better. Okay, it's working now. So I did need a client ID in secret. Open in the browser. And now we have the game. Hello. You got to type in exclamation point join to, to join the game. There you go. And then uh, click start. And then we got to type in. So for me, I just type in small batch chill wave bracket di comma meditation messenger. And Roy, you need to uh, type in each word. <laughs> Celiac neutral. Oh, I'm, I'm in the way of your words, too. Uh, milk, hotel, sal salvia, trust, fund, shore, ditch, gate, keep. So you need to do one word at a time, essentially. And you can, uh, so I, we haven't played this. Do I type them in all at once? No, one word at a time. Yeah, small. You gotta get, you gotta get the capitalization right, too. There you go. Roy got it. Takes a lot of coordination for you all. This was a fun game to make on stream. An ad is about to start in 5, hey, you did it, but I beat you. I'm the winner. 33 seconds to your 77. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's it running in with bun or with NPM. If we switch over to bun. Roy, you were saying I got to do bun. Bun source source yeah bun dot slash source server slash server dot js I, like these apps are so small I'm not seeing a significant difference you know we need to alternate picking words I think right yes so if Roy types a word and then I type the next word that works yes absolutely so if you get a bunch of people coordinated uh, you can you can potentially beat the streamer that was the idea that was our one way of approaching it in the past we had it where you had to type out each letter and people were doing that and it didn't work out so well among other things what's up Chris Jones welcome back we can do every word, Rugman. One word. Yep. All right. So we can try it out. You want to play it again? So this is in bun now. So type join, exclamation point, join. 
and then your face will pop up on here. Okay, and then you got to coordinate together. Let me switch to the other side so I don't hide your words on you. <clears throat> but it, I mean, essentially, even if you don't see it, it's the same same words as the streamer words. All right, you ready? Here we go. The timer starts when you get the first word. Boom, 17 seconds. Why is that being flagged? Sorry about that. That's not that's not fair. Yeah, rigged. We were sabotaged from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Got it, chat. You got it. intelligentsia. These are all hipster words. It's from the hipster API or something like that, if I recall correctly. Nice. Well done. Well done. Well done. We should split it. You know what I could also do is instead of it, it could be like the streamer and then like team A versus team B. And then like, you know, every you, you choose whether you want to join team A, team B, and we could see you know, who all is the fastest type of thing. That's another way we could break that game. I need to get back to this project. It's a pretty good one and really work on the UI. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, so that's bun running simple projects. Um, I do want it to get run my more complex chat bot, but I don't want to bore everybody with the setup of it. You know what I mean? Like having to get, yeah, it is very, you like the UI. It's pretty simplistic. Oh, I'm glad, glad to hear that. Um, but you get the idea of, running it i got another i have an ex, my work project the big fix i'm not going to do it on stream here but we do a lot of bun, uh transpilation and we have a whole build flow where we got to build the client build the server which building the server is transpiling from typescript to javascript and i wonder if bun can speed like i could time that out with how much of time it takes for us to run with npm locally and then a node and then switch that to bun and see how much that changes that would be another little little test for us to try to see i think that'd be that'd be interesting i'm trying to think what else we could do again if you all have any questions about bun or there's certain uh scenarios that you can think of that we can maybe try out let me know and i'd be happy to, to do that i wonder like if i want to install like a new package so let's say in this one uh this is an npm let's say i want to npm install fastify that went fine that took about three seconds and in here i say bun install fastify that was a little that was faster <laughs> that bun saying it was 1.6 seconds it's interesting how like you see it's like my my prompt tells me when it takes three oh you know why because i think my prompt knows knows how to time npm but it doesn't know how to time bun i think something like that but anyway move out of the way oh my bad all right let's do another one then bun uh we'll do it in here bun install uh What's another thing we can install? Fastify Express. I think I already have Express in this one. Yeah, I already, I already. 
depend on that. Uh, actually, let's do that again. Do I have Axios? Maybe I have Axios. What about Fetch? No. Helmet, Socket.io, um, Purify Comfy. Oh, we're using Comfy JS in this one. What if we uh, install TMI? I want something big. What's like a big package? A heavy package. Oh, look at all the built-in modules that are compatible. Fully implemented, no assert. Async hooks only, async local storage, and async are implemented. Buffer, child process. Bloated math? What's bloated math? Oh, okay. Oh, and it uses ES modules. So if we want to actually use this, this is going to be a good. This actually, let's start a new project that uses is math. Uh, CD back. Uh, make their math test. CD math test in that one, and then NPM, we're going to do the same thing. Should move these to be side by side, actually. Hmm. All right, we got bun. On the left, npm on the right, uh, we'll say bun install uh, bloated math, npm install bloated math, uh, then I'm going to say touch index.js, oh, no, actually, uh, rm index.js, I'm going to say touch index.ts. And that what that does is creates a file, creates the index.ts file. And if you look in here, here's that. And then in the npm example, we got math tests right there. Okay. Uh, let's clear, clear. And then I'm going to open up this one and this one. And like, what's something we can do with math test? How do you use it? I'll give you an example on usage. Oh, import bloated math source main to get access to class containing all functions and constants as a static field. Import individual functions. All right, so we're going to import bloated math source main. Uh, we're going to say import star as math from that. Does that work? Oh, that's fine. Uh, and we want to do the same thing in the NPM node side of things. And then I could say like math dot. What's, what's available from this thing? Uh, we can do like is, is prime, I guess. Uh, 
Yes. All right, hold on. Hold on, chat. Um, maybe I could just do this. What's it, compl what's it complaining about? Cannot find module. Oh, it's dist. Does that work? Ah, okay. So in here, can I do math dot? How do you use this damn package? <laughs> oh, I gotta do function? What does index do? Oh, it exports a class, bloated math. Okay. So I say uh, const math equals new bloated math. Yeah, maybe that is what I meant. And now I should do like math dot is prime. Doesn't see it right there. Oh, maybe I don't need to new it up, right? Because it's a static class. So I could just say, oops. Uh, bloated math dot is prime. That works. Okay. Do the same thing over here. Save. Clear. That should work now. Okay. Console.log. Thank you for the round of applause. False. False. Winter has left the building. <laughs> and so now here I'm going to say node index.ts. Uh, it doesn't know what to do with that, right? So now, so here's, here's a stark difference. <laughs> Maybe if I change, you know, like, so if I needed to get this to work in NPM, the math test one, then I need to basically do like index.js instead. Index.js. Okay. And then I need to say const, uh, bloated 
math equals require from bloated math and then bloated math or console and then that right so i can't get typescript right out of the bat with node right now but there is some stuff that's going to be changing i think with that um so now i could say node index.js ah and then it's still saying module not found and that is because it's it's ESM and not uh, CJS. So it's an ECMAScript module and not a common JS module based on, on all that fun stuff. So one way to potentially get around that is I think going to the latest version of Node.js 20. So here's where node is starting to become more like deno in the latest changes look there's permission model restrict access to the file system just like deno worker threads child process and that kind of stuff um what else custom esm loader hooks nearing stable so they're getting there to be able to support esm natively then the v8 engine so one of the difference between bun and node is node uses the v8 engine uh how do i describe it i don't even know if i could speak intelligently to it but it's like the engine that compiles javascript essentially and is able to run javascript i guess i'm probably saying that incorrectly whereas uh bun uses uh, i believe webkit is what they said right so that's another difference Just reading this. This is the first time I'm seeing it. Roy Elise thinks you look dehydrated and wants you to drink some water. I'm drinking a smoothie, but thank you, Roy. Cheers. Appreciate that. <clears throat> um. I don't know if uh, I don't know how I should go about it. lifestyle hooks. So all right, so custom ES module lifestyle hooks supplied via loaders. So I gotta say experimental loader now running dedicated thread isolated from the main thread. This provides a separate scope for loaders and ensures no cross contamination between loaders and application code. In alignment with browser behavior, import.meta.resolve now returns synchronously. Okay, these changes were the last outstanding items before marking ESM loaders as stable. Once time has gone by without significant bugs reported by the community, we intend to mark the loader's flag uh, and hooks as stable. So how do I go about... <clears throat> I guess let's look at the documentation for 20. And I think we can search for ESM. ECMA. Enabling Node.js is two module systems. Authors can tell Node.js to use the ECMAScript modules loader via the MJS extension. The package. All right. So let's, let's change it from index.js to index.mjs, maybe. Clear that. And is that enough? It still cannot resolve the module. Oh, do I need? I need a uh, NVM install twenty. I need to install that version of Node. Give that a second. I don't know if this is necessarily a fair test between the two, but I guess what what this is showing though, not speed wise, but the experience side by side, right? So I can literally just write straight up in TypeScript with Bun node not quite there 
because I need extra stuff to do that. Um, no JS 20 TypeScript. I wonder if they have anything related to that. Is there anything in here that says TypeScript on it? No. They say TS is dying because JS tools started existing to replace the only reason most people use TS, which is types and runtime errors. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, VS Code very heavily uses it. And uh, that's what cre gives you that rich IntelliSense and experience. Ooh, they have a built-in test runner now too. The recent update to Node version 20 includes an important change to the test runner module. The module has been marked as stable after a recent update. The stable test runner includes the building blocks for authoring and running tests, including describe it. Oh, that's nice. Mocking watch mode, node test for running multiple test files in parallel. That is great to see. So node 20 is getting there. Let's see if it finished installing the new version of uh, NVM. What are those kids doing? NVM use 20. All right, so now I can say node index uh, MJS. Requires not defined. Okay, cool. So now, now that we're doing that, if we say we can go back to this. Oh, I might have messed up actually. Because this says import from loaded mat this index, and I didn't have that there. That might have been a, a red herring. Let's try again. Now we're still back to module not found. What if I get rid of that and go like this? Module not found. Cannot find package. Bloated math package JSON. I do slash dist. All right, we get unsupported dir import. That should work. Right? Am I going crazy, chat? Do I need to put in the whole thing? Maybe that MJS? No. Nope. Uh, interesting how you're importing these. I've never seen a requirement to do anything but import stuff from lib. Yeah. Uh, I. Mm. Well, let's double check this one. Maybe we can get back to just bloated math like this. Oh, it doesn't like that. I think it's the way this package is working. Maybe we can get a different package. Um, is there another math library? 12 years ago. All right, this might be better. <clears throat> Let's install math.js. Uninstall math.js. Bath.js. <laughs> Do they have an is prime or anything like that? Or we'll just take their example, right? Let's take all this example code. Uh, 
run run or bun index.ts. I guess we need to console log all this stuff. <clears throat> Quick way we can do this is uh, control down arrow. We could say console.log and then end. Oh, not end. I gotta get rid of those comments. console.log I can go to the end it's quick and easy get rid of these console oh <clears throat> again there I guess I'm logging some weird stuff so zero point four nine okay so let's do the same thing in here now I need to say npm install did we already do that not JS Okay, we got it. Save that. And let's see if now we say node. Hey, okay. I don't know that that really showed us anything <laughs> other than uh, the development experience, right? Like I, I really like being able to just do this index.ts and be done with it. But you could do the same thing. There, there's an argument that could be made where you could just do index.js with node and get the same same thing done, right? Rambler Geek ended up being a busy Friday evening for me here now. Yeah, no worries, Rambler Geek. Appreciate you popping in. How you been? What's your win of the week if you got one to share? Otherwise, no pressure. So, you know, I, I you know, take it with a grain of salt in that regard. Where I see this being truly super beneficial. Um, is definitely going to be in installing dependencies, running in a pipeline, uh, maybe even running tests. We haven't gotten to that level yet. I don't think I have a Shakira, I think, has tests that we could potentially try and running. Server. Do I have tests in here? I thought I saw one of the projects having tests. Or maybe it was that um, secure node example. is about to start in 5,000 milliseconds. There's an ad running for 90. I thought I had a uh, saw. Oh, sneak test. That's what that was. Um, a secure node server. Nope. Okay. That is what it is then. When are the week getting getting to the weekend? Congrats on that, Rambling Geek. Happy for you, buddy. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Overall, I'm impressed. Overall, it feels snappy. The developer experience feels good. Um, I, I don't know just yet. I think it's too early to say. 
or to make any drastic come to any drastic con conclusion that bun is gonna just take over the javascript runtime space i think it's certainly possible i think it's got it's definitely got an uphill battle to to really get to the same level of ubiquity as node.js does right now um but at the same time no clearly we, we saw that just now like looking at some of the documentation for node 20 node.js is building out stuff in a in a way to compete feature wise uh, and performance it's going to be a little bit hard so that's where node has a a uphill battle in the sense of it, it's going to struggle to compete in performance because uh, i mean until it gets to well every new new lts version is going to be a breaking change from the previous version for the most part right i forget how they they structure their their versioning i know every even number is an lts number and every odd is more of a experimental version to be using type of thing right but i feel like it's going to be a little bit more challenging for them to compete performance wise they have an uphill battle but feature set wise, I think they're going to be able to compete very easily there. So that really does leave if that if that all comes to fruition in that regard, right? Let's say there's parity feature wise and it just comes down to speed. I don't know that speed is enough on its own for any new runtime to just stand on. That's my conclusion. That's my prediction. Let me put it that way, right? If node continues to let's switch over here for a second. If Node, if Node continues in, on the path that it's on, which is very promising in that it's creating out features that from its competition that it's seeing developers are excited about and wanting, right? So seeing that growth in Node is great and very encouraging and even more reason not to jump ship from something that you already know as a developer or as a company even that's invested in that technology, right? Uh, and having lots of projects that are using that and having developers that are knowledgeable and skilled in that specifically. Not that one caveat to that. That's not to say that the skills and knowledge aren't transferable to these other runtimes. They mostly are with maybe some little caveats like you saw, like learning the commands and how bun handles bun install or bun start and running scripts, right? Like there's some little nuances here and there, but it's not significant enough to slow any developers down. Um, so if node continues down that path, the only significant difference between the runtimes is going to be the speed and performance of them, right? Part of that is the measurable actual performance of it when they do in various scenarios that they benchmark. And then this, the other aspect of that is the perceived speed too, right? Because I, I really do feel strongly that that's something that happens in a lot of things whenever they, whenever any technology or anybody claims speed, it's like, well, what are you, how are you measuring that? What are you measuring? And and what does it actually end up feeling like for somebody that's experiencing the speed that you're talking about, right? Does it actually feel at the speed that they're claiming type of thing? In Bun's case, I do feel that way. Like it does feel snappier to some extent, but then there's other situations where no, like it's so negligible. And again, given the projects we checked out today are, are mostly small projects. They're not big conglomerates. Like I have a monolith type project for work, the big fix app that I'm going to test this out on at some point. And that'll give me a true, a better sense performance wise. Right. But for even like small to mid sized projects, I don't think you're going to really notice a big difference in performance in that regard, but the tooling side of things, running scripts and running, running tests and that type of stuff. I think that's where installing dependencies, that's where there's going to be a significant improvement and. And even so, you could use Bun just for that, but still use Node in the environments, the runtime environments that you're, you know what I'm saying? I could see that happening as a possibility. Anyway, getting back to the point I'm making, competition-wise between this, this is great to see another runtime in, in that's viable option for people to use and, and see, and it's going to push all the other runtimes to be more competitive and more, um, and keep evolving, keep changing and growing, right? And I think we're seeing that. And that's part of why we see like node 20 having the latest features that it's uh, calling out in that documentation there. Okay. So I feel like this was, what do you all think? This was, was this a good rundown? Did this help you understand bun and some of the differences between bun and deno? I know we didn't go into a deno example. I haven't done that in the past before. Uh, I probably should do that. Maybe, maybe next stream we can dive into deno and see how that compares to all this a bit further. 
don't forget about that blog post I shared with you all in the chat. I'm going to drop it in there again. Um, you can go to it on the sneak.io slash blog and just find it there. It's one of the recent blog posts, but also the direct link to click on is great. Uh, Liminal says great docs help boost usage. Absolutely. I think nodes docs are fantastic. They, there's, it's easy to find things that I'm looking for, even reflecting back on the past when I had to like look up native modules that it has and, and whatnot, or how to do things, um, like encryption. Uh, I've had to look up their encrypting modules and stuff like that. Uh, it was pretty fairly straightforward and easy for me to find and implement in my project. <clears throat> I think bun does a pretty good job with their docs too. I mean, given I need to dive into that a bit more, so that's just like surface level kind of opinion on that right now. But I think they do, their docs are looking pretty good. And um, I can dive deeper into the, like really quick, just show my screen again here. The bun docs, you can, you can dive into the runtime itself, the package manager and all the different capabilities of that, the bundling of it. I need, I want to dive into that a little bit more at some point. Test running. They're executable, bun X, the package runner, and then the API. So a lot of, a lot of really cool stuff. Roadmap wise, I wonder if they've changed this yet. Hold on. Now that they're on 1.0 release, they haven't closed this out. Very cool though. Yeah, I guess they just didn't update this. But I imagine they're going to add a new roadmap for like 2.0 or 1.1, whatever it may be. <clears throat> so in any case, that covers everything that I was looking to do today. I really wanted to die. I was real. I was excited about it. Um, not getting caught up in the hype so much, but more so of like, like I said, it's nice to have the competition. I wanted to try it in and see if what they claim is actually, and like they're, you know, the, the, they're, they're walking the walk and not just talking the talk type of thing. So that was that's cool to see i'm surprised by that because typically not typically i feel like a lot of times in the javascript ecosystem folks behind new javascript libraries packages and whatnot make a lot of claims and then when you get into the weeds of it, it ends up not being exactly that type of thing and so uh i was a little a little uh cynical i guess maybe about that i i because of that i'm cynical when these things are said and claimed but i'm pleasantly surprised today how about you all what do you think as we start wrapping up here let me know what you think what do you feel you're going to give bun a try are you going to use it in your projects if you start a new project tomorrow would you consider using bun or are you on an existing project and maybe it might be worthwhile of plugging that in maybe not fully jumping over and converting that project to use bun but plugging it in for you to run your npm or npm installing dependencies or npm scripts in place of npm i might do that i could see myself doing that so love to hear more from you if you don't answer now in the chat that's cool feel free to join up on the discord and keep the discussion going i'll uh share more about my experience with my work project and converting that over and experimenting with bun in that project in the discord and then i'll share updates next stream at the beginning of next stream too on that okay uh nafron says i'm gonna try thanks for joining today surly dev hey surly dev have a good evening i'll appreciate you surly dev thank you for the lurk buddy uh liminal says i'm going to make a choice entirely on who has the best mascot <laughs> well then i think in that case it's bun right or i don't know i like deno with the, the little dinosaur logo no doesn't really have a mascot so it's between Deno and Bun. What do you prefer? Food or dinosaurs? Or dinosaur chicken nuggets? Uh, I'm going to make that choice. Great docs. Uh, Nafron says, I'm going to try Bun with a rewrite using Node Framework. Okay. I'm, 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 that sounds awesome. So I can revert to Node.js if ne necessary. Yeah, yeah. I'd be very curious to hear how that goes. That sounds interesting. Roy says, I'd like to try it, but so far it doesn't sound for me maybe when tests and all that exists. See you soon, Clark. Yo, missed you. Look, glad to see you back. Appreciate that, Roy. Glad to have you back, too. Glad to be back. Uh, never took a revert. Roy says, I have yet to try Deno, actually. I want to see that as well. Uh, Liminal says, but seriously, thanks for walking through that today. I appreciate I'm glad that was helpful for you. That's what it was. my goal was, and I got to experience it, too. So I, it was like selfishly I wanted to toy with this. 
I know in the like past last stream, I was like, oh, we're going to jump into the VS code develop extension development further. I saw this and I was like, I need to, I need to try it out. So thanks for uh, indulging me and letting us divert a little bit from the, the original plan. All right. So I will see you all next week. We'll be right back here next Friday. That will be at. Oh. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, next Friday, which will be September 15th. Yes, September 15th. Uh, at 1230 p.m. Eastern time right here on twitch.tv slash Clarkio over over on YouTube. Appreciate you. Be sure to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on YouTube, please. Appreciate it. Just do it. Yes, Rugman. Just do it. So just do it. Make your dreams come true. Come true. Nothing, Nothing is impossible. No, what are you waiting for? Do it. Just I had to shut him up. Shia LaBeouf. It's a little out of hand at times. Um, next Friday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Twitch.tv. If you've made it this far into the stream and you're not already following on Twitch, if you don't mind, I would greatly appreciate it if you drop a follow right now. That way you can be alerted to and be aware of when we have our next stream and you don't forget or miss out on that. If you're over on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. That way, you, same thing. You don't miss out on all that fun stuff. I greatly appreciate it. And on that note, we're going to close things out. And I hope you all have a good rest of your Friday and weekend. I'll see you next week. Until then, think about your wins. Okay? Don't forget about that. Reflect on each day. Don't forget to reflect on each day and try and find something positive that happened. And try not to dwell for so long on the negative. Okay. I'll leave you with that. Okay. Uh, if you want to keep in touch with me on socials, there's my links in the chat right now. Twitter underscore Clark Twitter. Don't worry about Twitter. Don't worry about any of the socials. Honestly, really just join the discord. That's the best place to keep in touch with me. Exclamation point discord or clarkio.com slash discord. Um, and share your wordle results in there too. Huh? All right. I'll see you all next time. Have a good one. Peace out.